I would like to welcome everyone to the May 24th meeting of the Newburn Board of Aldermen. At this time tonight, the prayer will be given by Alderman Johnny Ray Kinsey. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Aldermen meeting. Pastor Johnson, can you come to the podium, please, and give us prayer? Thank you, uh, Alderman Kinsey, to our mayor, and to all of our city officials that have gathered uh, together for this important meeting. And uh, we would like to uh, pause for a moment to offer our prayers to the community of um, the individuals that uh, 14 lives in Texas um, love this loss today and one of uh, one teacher and so that community and those uh, families definitely need our prayers and we would like to just pause and offer our prayers up to them before we begin our meeting today. Shall we bow in silent prayer? Shall we pray? Our loving, gracious Father in heaven, the creator and the maker of this awesome universe, we come before you all because you a mighty good God that never ever sleeps, but always sitting on your throne in heaven, looking down upon your children 24-7, uh, providing protection, love, and care, and mercy, and grace, and healing power into our lives. And we are certainly in eternally grateful to you for who you are and all that you have done for us and all that you will continue to do if we continue to trust you and put you first in all of our endeavors. So Lord, we come into this important meeting of this night. We come, dear God, thanking you that you brought us from a mighty, mighty long way in making a difference in our city, in our community. So Lord, we all about doing your will and not ours, all because you have trusted us to be stewards over taking care of the needs of our city. So Lord, unite us together around everything that will be uh, brought before us for action, for vote, allow us to be on one accord, even in our differences, that we may agree together to do what is good, right, and best for the good of all of our citizens of this city. And we thank you for being our guide. In this, in this prayer we offer to you, in Jesus' name, and the Redeemer of the Lord, say amen. 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 <coughs> Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Bingle? Here. Alderwoman Harris? Alderman Astor? Here. Mayor Outlaw? Here. Alderman Kinsey? Here. Alderman Best? Present. Alderman Odom? Here. Okay, our first item tonight is the consent agenda. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. A motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Motion carries. Our first item is item number eight, presentation. 
of the American Flood Coalition. Tony, if you want to come on up. Tony McElland is from Wilmington and was the assistant to the mayor, Mayor Bill Sappho in Wilmington. And uh, if you followed anything since Hurricane Florence, a lot of the coordination of Eastern North Carolina staff and leaders going to D.C. and Raleigh, Tony is the one that, that was setting all that up. And, uh, you know, special thanks to what you did and, and Mayor Sappho and the city of Wilmington did. Uh, and so, you know, go ahead and, and have at it. And again, uh, Tony has talked with the CARE group here in New Bern and others, and his organization can help us with community, community ratings and other things like that. So the floor is yours, Tony, and it's good to have you up here. Thank you, Mayor. Well, very much. Thank you to Council for having me and the staff for helping to arrange it. I want to just give a brief presentation uh, and make a request of, of the City of New Bern Council. Uh, but first, let me, I want to return the favor and say thank you to Mayor Outwell in particular and thank you to New Bern uh, for y'all's leadership. And let me kind of tell you what, what I mean by that. So shortly after Hurricane Florence, Hurricane, I was at the time working uh, for the City of Wilmington. I was their state and federal lobbyist. And I understand the value of building coalitions to get things done on behalf of communities, as New Bern understands as well. And so shortly after Hurricane Florence, Wilmington had devastating impacts, just like the city of New Bern had devastating impacts. And so we started to bring together groups of local elected officials throughout eastern North Carolina to raise our collective voice on behalf of our communities. Very quickly, we saw the value in, in reaching out to Mayor Outlaw, and he reciprocated with his time and energy. And uh, soon enough, we started growing this organization and started to get a lot of national attention. We took some trips to Washington, and we found ourselves, Mayor Outlaw, I've got some good pictures of this, uh, in the White House all of a sudden. We weren't all that prepared for it, but we had some county uh, commissioners and some mayors, a small group, in including your mayor. And so we met with, uh, at the time, Secretary Ben Carson, uh, Sec Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, and we again met with White House officials as well. So we kept kind of um, uh, being the squeaky wheel on behalf of Eastern North Carolina, and we grew this kind of informal alliance that we created to 64 mayors and county commission chairs. And I would get calls from the national organizations and the Washington Post and, and other uh, media outlets wanting to know kind of how we set up this bipartisan group and we're making you know, our, our voice heard and that type of thing. And so we kept kind of moving forward and um, uh, we, we worked on some things in Congress. We worked with the state legislature and fast forward to this past year. Uh, and the state legislature introduced a bill uh, so we had set up, let me back a little bit, a listening tour throughout Eastern North Carolina because of COVID, a virtual listening tour. And so we came up with six priorities. Um, and of those six priorities, uh, five were put into House Bill 500 uh, that was introduced by Majority Leader John Bell, who represents Goldsboro, some of y'all may be familiar with. And that ultimately was put into the state budget. And I'm pleased to announce that, that as a result of, of y'all's leadership, Wilmington and other communities across Eastern North Carolina, we got $347 million in direct response to our five priorities in the, in the budget. And so what will happen with those dollars is they will take, do these large-scale watershed studies that will help take politics out of the infrastructure projects that relate to flood resilience, sea level rise adaptation, and so they'll make scientific decisions and invest state resources into infrastructure on the front end to save lives and resources on the back end. And so stream and riverine management funding, stormwater funds, significant amount of funding that's flowing to our state. North Carolina and Florida are probably the two biggest leaders in the country on these issues, thanks in large part to what New Bern did and some other communities throughout eastern North Carolina. And so one of those national organizations, so I don't know anything about flood resilience. I'm not a technical expert. People are way smarter than me know a lot more about this stuff than I do. I more deal with kind of the politics of it, right? And so what, um, uh, thankfully during all that time when we were coming up with these policy proposals doing the listening sessions, we had these major national organizations like the Pew Charitable Trust, American Flood Coalition, who I'm here to talk with you about, and several others. And, um, a few months ago, the uh, American Flood Coalition came to me with a job offer. I hate to leave Wilmington, but it allows me to kind of elevate our collective voices even more. So I am now the, the first ever Carolinas director for the American Flood Coalition, which is a national organization. I represent them to Congress and to uh, the General Assemblies in North and South Carolina. So what I try to do is take 
your concerns here in New Bern, the concerns of your community, put those into policy proposals and run those through Raleigh and run those into Washington. And so what I'd like to do is just give you a, a quick understanding of what the American Flood Coalition is. And let me preface all this by saying this is not a sales, it is a sales pitch, but it's not a sales pitch in the sense that we're not asking for any money. There's no commitments to anything. By having y'all a part of, of our collective voice, it helps us to raise, again, your voice and helps me to be more effective on your behalf, <coughs> on behalf of these issues in Raleigh and in Washington. So the American Flood Coalition is a 501c3 nonprofit. Here's, we have about 30 staffers. Uh, most are in Washington. I'm here by myself, uh, so I appreciate y'all <laughs> letting me come here tonight. I'm here by myself working remote in, in North and South Carolina, based out of Wilmington. Um, uh, so the, so who is the American Flood Coalition? Again, 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, we're primarily a, a policy think tank and an advocacy group, uh, extremely bipartisan organization. Uh, we have federal champions. Uh, Congressman Greg Murphy is one of our federal champions. Congressman David Rouser, just south of here, is one of our federal champions. And so we have Republican and Democrat federal champions that are aligned with our issues. We have a, a significant amount of cities, towns, and counties throughout North Carolina and the nation. The main focus is Florida, Texas, South Carolina, and North Carolina right now. That's where the most opportunities are, and we'll grow from there. Uh, we have elected officials, Mayor Bill Sappho, most of the leadership uh, team, uh, Mayor Outlaw is a member now as well. Most of the leadership team from the alliance that we started that worked on our stuff last year in the legislature are all members of this organization as well. We have a significant amount of state legislators that are a member of this organization. Uh, again, completely bipartisan. We have business organizations, uh, military groups, civic and academic groups. Um, over 280 members nationwide. Again, I'm, I'm here tonight to ask you all to become one of those members. Um, as you can see, kind of here's the hot spots for where we're most active, and that's kind of a, uh, the intersection of where flood and, and sea level rise is most of concern. Um, but also where there's the most opportunity in the, in the legislative uh, levels in those states. Uh, the mission is protecting communities that are vulnerable to flooding and sea level rise, uh, which is a national issue that must be met with national solutions. It is vitally important to our well-being, economic strength, and security. With effective flooding and sea level rise, claiming our communities can adapt and thrive, but we have to act now. Um, the four pillars, economy, community, rebuilding, and military. Uh, all, all of those obviously touch New Bern like they touch Wilmington. Um, and so here's kind of what we offer. Again, there's no charge to this. You're not committed to any policy. It's just a show of support. Um, but what we do provide is best-in-class educational guides. Uh, if you have staff that have a, a, a question around uh, flood resilience, uh, stormwater, what have you, we have some of the brightest minds in the nation. Uh, at our disposal uh, in our Washington office that will come together and meet one-on-one -on -one with local governments and local government leaders. Tools for effective communication. If, if y'all as local elected officials uh, are making a speech in the community to the Chamber of Commerce or what have you, and you would like some um, talking points around this issue, some solutions that you can share with community organizations like Mayor Outlaw, the one you brought to my attention, uh, we have things that we can share with you with that. Um, networks of leaders on flooding. Uh, we, in mid-June, we are a very well-resourced organization. Uh, we partner with large groups like Kresge Foundation and Pew Charitable Trust. Um, uh, in mid-June, as an example, we're flying 60 mayors up from around the country in our target states. We're paying for all the travel. Uh, we're paying for all the hotel stay, everything. Um, and so that's this kind of network of folks working together so there can be this cross-collaboration and solution sharing. Uh, competitive local resilience pilots. We actually have micro grants. We recently awarded, uh, I think, a little less than $100,000 to the city of Kinston. So there is some funding opportunity directly from our organization. Uh, but more than anything, we try to connect you with those funds, and I'll share that in a moment. And then again, a platform for advocacy and education. That's kind of more of where I come in. Um, so here's one of the resources. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the best things. Flood Funding Finder. These are ideal, this is an ideal tool that we developed in partnership with the Kresge Foundation that's ideal for communities of less than 50,000. And so you plug in basically what your needs are and it will come back to you with, hey, here's where there's resources, federal, state, local, foundational, what have you. 
that your community can access. And if you need assistance in applying for that or accessing it, again, we have staff that's there to be helpful to you. Yes, ma'am. Do you mind if I ask a question as you're going along? I probably don't have an answer. Okay. Have <laughs> uh, I'm just curious. So that is for us to look at. That's not for the general public to go on. And oh, yeah. yeah, it yeah I mean, so the general could, public yeah, you, you don't have to be a This is a resource for whomever. You don't have to be a member, just, but just this is part of what we provide to communities around the country. Um, and, and let me back up real quick. One of the key things I found, and it's really, it's a sad thing. New Bern is in a different situation than most of Eastern North Carolina, along with Wilmington. I mean, you all have excellent staff. I know because I've talked with a few of them in recent days. Wilmington has excellent staff. But if you've ever heard of Fair Bluff, North Carolina, in Columbus County, uh, they were almost wiped off the face of the earth from flooding, from Matthew and from Florence. And they may never fully rebuild what they had. They have a manager that they share with five other communities. So there is a definite intersection between communities with significant need on these issues and communities that have uh, lack of capacity, basically, at the staff level. And so what we've tried to advocate for is state-funded technical assistance, where there's folks that are connected to Depart Department of Environmental Quality, NCOR, what have you, that are actively out in these communities, helping folks understand where there are resources, what project are right for those resources, helping them with engineering and that type of thing. So that's one of the key things that we've accomplished last year in the budget, and that's one of the key things that my group works on. And so this fund fund funding finder is an example of that. But there's also more hands-on stuff as well. Um, dual disaster handbook is another thing we created for communities. Hopefully COVID-19 will get to the point where that's in the rear view, but not quite yet. But so for communities like ours that face hurricane concerns, so you've got the dual threat of if you have evacuations, shelters, and that type of thing, you know, how do you grapple with COVID and that? So we've got a great um, nationally renowned handbook to deal with that. Um, and that's it. I try to be as short as possible with you, and I, I hope that helps a little bit. And, this is actually my first public presentation in my new job, so either you are my guinea pigs or I'm yours, I'm not quite sure. So. Well, tell me this. Yes, what sir. What does a member, what's the benefit for being a member? Um, so, again, benefit is really helping to ensure that your voice is heard at a national level. Um, you know, I don't know what advocacy team you all have in place or anything like that, but if you have concerns on these issues, you can funnel them through us, and we can elevate those issues and try to make things happen at the state and national level. There's that. There is, um, you know, we're responsive to your needs. If you have a, a concern about a community you represent and you call me, I can bring uh, a response to you with some expert uh, guidance in, in response to that concern or, or need. Is it uh, a cost of being a member? There's zero, there's zero cost. It, it kind of feels weird that I'm going around like saying, hey, become a member, but there's zero cost. So how do you all actually operate? Uh, well, so we have... I know, uh, you're, not, I know you're a nonprofit. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you've ever heard, so one of the larger foundations, I guess, in the world is the Pew Charitable Trust. Mm -hmm. They, we do work with them. The Kresge Foundation as well is another large foundation uh, that we do work with. We have a, actually a North Carolina native that's the chair of the board and put the initial funding together to do this. It's a personal passion of his. And so we, we are, a, a, I'm proud to say, a pretty well-resourced organization that's growing. And this issue it does not lack for funders. I mean, this is one of, um, this is probably one of the top three issues in the nation going forward. So I don't deal with anything with climate change, right? But regardless of the cause, there are certainly effects that our communities face. You know, you can't argue with the fact there's sea level rise. We can't argue because we've seen different storms, you know, the frequency and the severity of storms. So I don't get into the call stuff, but we get into the effect of these things and the effect on the communities. Uh, so they're, they're, we are a well-resourced organization. So we're not coming to you asking for anything. We're coming to you just asking to be a part of our coalition and because it helps us do what we do to have you in our corner. That makes sense. Yes. So you spoke with some of our stormwater uh, staff about some of the issues. I have that, not yet. No, sir. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I, I am at y'all's disposal, regardless of membership. But I'm at y'all's disposal and again. <coughs> I'm not the technical person, but I've got people behind me that are, and, and it can be helpful. Tony, could you give the, the city? Uh, could you give some cities that are already in the organization in in uh, North Carolina? Yeah, uh, Wilmington, Pender County is about to be one. Whiteville is one. 
We're starting, there was devastating flooding in the mountains in August of 2021, so communities like Canton are, are coming on board. Uh, Nags Head is a member. Um, it, it's, it's a lot of communities. We probably have about uh, 50 state legislators, again, uh, pretty evenly divided between Democrat and Republican. And, and actually, if I can take a step back real quick, is someone who is very concerned about the partisan divide in this country, just personal platform here. This is one of the beautiful thing about this is you never have to, you don't have to, you can just kind of check your partisan feelings at the door. This is one of the very few things right now in this world that brings Republicans and Democrats together, and it's really a neat thing to be a part of. I mean, I, we, I've brought together legislators where you've got the most liberal person and the most conservative person sitting beside of each other talking about these issues and learning from each other. So it's, what it's do we need to do? I'm sorry? What do we need to do to sign up? Just pass a resolution. Mr. Davis, um, from a legal standpoint, what do you have any problem with this? Is, can the board just simply make a motion and a, an approval? Help. Yes, it might help to direct the city manager to put a resolution on the next agenda, and then you'll have a, a written resolution to approve. The uh, biggest thing I see in working with Tony is, is and, I, and Tony, you know, Pender County had all the <coughs> air quality issues in the schools, one at like $13 million or something, and, um, you know, just going up there and getting on, on the radar, both in Raleigh and D.C., is so important, and I see what Tony can do through this organization is probably tenfold to what we were doing when we went up there. And um, so, and, and again, some of the things we've dealt with here in Newburn is the communication um, end of trying to communicate to the public. You know, when, when a citizen is being told by one engineer to elevate and being told by another one not to elevate, and then it puts the city kind of in a jam of, of making any type of recommendation. Because if we, tell them one thing, then somebody else might tell them something. I mean, so there's that communication issue that I think that this organization can help us out with. Yeah. A couple yeah. questions. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Tony, I'm so glad that you're here, and I want to thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I, we alerted you to our CARES group, who's been a very active organization who are trying to make sure that we do have the resources we need in the future so we're not caught like we were. Again, a 500-year flood, none of us you know, ever expected, any of us as elected officials, that we would ever deal with something like that. Um, have you seen our resiliency study that we just recently finished and, and did? And how does that compare to what these other communities are doing? Is that something that you can take and work with our CARES group to try to either implement it or take it to another level? Because I think the concern is, is that we went through this whole process and basically what it says is you've got flooding issues and you, you know, it's, it's gonna happen again. I don't know that there was any real need to it. Yeah. Is that something you can assist us with and, and, and work with the CARES group? Because I feel that sometimes our citizens feel that we are either not empathetic or we're not understanding what they're, they're trying to ask for and get. And again, we are just trying to provide the resources such as, you know, storm water and digging ditches and trying to get the water flowing better. We're trying to put new pumps and other systems in. But there's a higher level that we, most of us, I would, I'm not speaking for everybody, but I don't think many of us know about. And we do need assistance. We need somewhere for our citizens to be able to call and get the answers that we can't answer for them. So would you be a stopgap or would this organization help in that matter? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't know if we're in a position, and I, I know you're not asking this, but I mean, we're not necessarily in a position to run interference with community organizations, but if, if you want to bring them to the table, if you have this resilience uh, document, so, and this goes to your point, Mr. Kinsey, um, about what we could use from y'all, we need that from, from you because, yeah, we can try to make things happen for you uh, legislatively, but we have to get these ideas from your communities via the studies, via conversation, what have you, and, and marry those with some of our folks that are working on developing policies. So we're making sure that we're implementing your local concerns and your local needs. So yeah, we, we can do that. And, and, if, and, if, and again, I'm not the technical expert, so bear with me. But if you all want to set up a meeting tomorrow with some of our staff that are, do have emergency management, engineering, you know, policy backgrounds that I don't, uh, and bring your community organizations to the table to talk through some things. Yeah, absolutely. That's we, what she's saying. That's what yeah. she 
That's what she yes, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I know that the CARES group, when we you were on the phone with us, before we go to phase two, we want phase two to be the the end all to everything we'll need, and and phase one does not do that. And so I think it'd be very important for your, some of your experts to help us out, um, along with the CARES group and others, before we formulate and finish that phase two. And Mayor, and again, one of the things that it's a kind of a smaller six million dollars is not small ticket, but relative to the three hundred and some million that we got in the state budget, there's a six million dollar slice of, of money that is meant to go to the COGS. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what COG represents y'all. Um, News River. News River. Okay, so what they would do is they would get a part of the, these dollars. They would hire technical. <clears throat> assistance staff that would be more proactive in your community um, and so there should be help on the way coming on that as well but in the interim that we can kind of digest some of that stuff and try and connect you with resources that can kind of help fulfill y'all's vision on resilience okay if the board so sees fit and, and has wants to move forward with this we can prove this tonight and then Yes, you might have to be ready for next meeting. Yes, so you might entertain a motion to um, have this resolution on the consent agenda for next meeting, just to make it even quicker, if you like. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion on this? Several roll calls starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom. Yes. Alderman Best. Yes. Alderman Kinsey. Yes. Mayor Outlaw. Yes. Alderman Astor. Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Best? Bingle. Bingle. Yes. <laughs> I didn't want to vote twice for him. <laughs> okay, the motion carries, and Tony, thank you for everything. And one thing that was interesting, you mentioned in here military. I don't know if you remember, and I don't remember the order number or whatever, but the military is actually exempt on a lot of things, state and units, families, or I don't know if you remember that item or not. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I heard that. I think more kind of where we come from is that um, – you know, increased flooding, storm frequency, severity, sea level rise, that's a threat to our military readiness. Uh, and there's a lot of retired generals and that type of thing that lend their voice to that issue as well. Well, we appreciate you and we'll be in touch. I'll leave a stack of my cards. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All much. right. Let's Mayor, go down to number nine. Go ahead. Yes, sir, Mayor. At this time, I'd like to ask Tabari Wallace, Kit Paraguay, and Julian Tripp to come up and make a presentation by the Redevelopment Commission. to bar because yes. I keep telling him that the teacher of the year, this is your domain. <laughs> it's a lot different. It's a lot different. Mr. <laughs> Ellen himself. <laughs> Thank you all for the uh, Greetings, May Outlaw, and to uh, the rest of the great aldermen we have here assembled. Um, I bring you greetings from the Redevelopment Commission. Uh, we're going to be going through giving you a brief overview um, of what the health and wellness work group um, is, is, is trying to accomplish in the very, very near future. All right. Uh, first, our, our, our vision of Newberry Development, um, leading the way for community transformation and improvement by directly addressing community needs in the vital areas of public community needs, uh, health infrastructure, housing, and economic development. Again, the commission is committed to account accountable, transparent, and publicly driven processes. What I'm going to be discussing today is directly addressing community needs, okay, in the vital area of public health, okay? Um, our tenets of the health and wellness work group um, is to encourage community health and wellness, to increase the number of health care, wellness, and recreation options in the redevelopment boundary area, and to support the retention of a comprehensive health and wellness center within the redevelopment boundary area. Okay. That site that we're looking at to begin this endeavor on is uh, the proposed location of 908 Bloomfield Street and two adjacent areas right next to it. Uh, before I get into the tenets of what we plan to offer at the site, um, I want to let you know the partners that we've already secured. We went out our way to not ever to have to come back in front of you again and ask for anything 
um, but we've secured some, some, some big name partners. Um, and, that, and that list should grow as soon as we can get consultation with them and go ahead and get the partnership agreement. But just to name a few of the ones that we've already secured is Dr. Fisher from Craven County Health Department, Dr. Livingston from North Carolina Central University, uh, Wanda Boone from Durham Tribe, Duke University, uh, Religious Community Services, uh, myself and my co-chair, uh, Reggie Jones, I mean not Reggie Jones, I'm sorry, Julian Tripp, and then Reggie Jones is, uh, is a community leader, y'all, um, he had surgery today, um, so please keep him in your prayers, he would have been here probably standing right beside me, uh, he's been with us for three years, a very, very integral part, um, and the Mercy Clinic we have yet to secure. Now, I want to illustrate um, the why that we're here. I've been in education 23 years, okay? I've been in all three areas of Craven County. And in all my schools, and my wife's school, because she just had an incident last week, um, low-income parents who can't afford just to run their children out to the hospital, we all know that's a $1,700 bill once you get out there, even if they just give you a shot, okay? They will wait. We'll have babies sitting in the classroom, and they'll be sitting there with their arms swollen up. But mama won't, in, won't spend that money until she's for sure that the child is, is hurt to the point of needing to go to the hospital. So they sit in first period, hurt, until the nurse gets there, they think. And then they go to the nurse, the nurse says, ha, that's broke, you need to go and seek medical care. We'll call mama, then she'll take it. But that child has already been through, you know, if it's on the weekend, that's three days, hurting like that, trying to wait for a professional to say you need to seek uh, further medical attention. And that's kind of what brings us here today. That site is located right in the heart of the Five Points community, um, right adjacent to the Deathfield area. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Main Street. It comes right down, it's right on the side of that. How many, and the main thing is it's in walking distance. It's in walking distance for that Five Points community. Okay? So recommended and preventative services that we want to offer. Let me get this clicker right. There we go. Um, it's health promotion awareness, stress, you will have screenings for cancer, blood pressure, cholesterol, prostate, diabetes, and alcohol. We will have blood work that can be drawn at the wellness center and then transported to the health department um, uh, for um, analysis. Trauma interventions, smoking cessations, addictive, addiction interventions, community forums, and many possible others with the partnership that we have. I know the slide says personnel needed, but these are personnel that will already be provided via the grant, the rural uh, communities grant that happens to already be in place with Duke University and North Carolina Central University. Dr. Livingston, who is representative of North Carolina Central, was on his way. He ran into bad weather, law enforcement, and everything else trying to get down here. So what, if he walks in, I'll defer to him, okay? But uh, he ran into some, some issues. He said he'd be delayed. Um, but that partnership will give a certified nurse, nursing students who are required to uh, spend 2,000 hours of internship hours in a rural community, exactly what we're trying to do. That's why they jumped at the opportunity to partner with us. And then the health department, he, and they, they made sure I said that, will give supplemental services to what the grant, if the, if the grant omits something, then they will kick in and assist and use their, their personnel and their services to make sure we have a fully comprehensive program. The Rural Healthcare Funding Initiative pretty much um, provides supplemental services, counseling services, and interventions that will be largely done by Tri-Durham, North Carolina Central University, and the Duke University Partnership, again, takes care of the personnel and the at-large services, and the health department will supplement, and these are all part of the Rural Community Health Initiative. Okay, I'm gonna let y'all look at that. I've never changed the slides. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so other pertinent information being that Dr. Livingston, I was hoping he would come through that door. I'm going to read to you the partnership agreement, uh, some of it, uh, if time permits, if I'm allowed, uh, just so you can hear from them. I don't want to put words in North Carolina Central University's mouth. Um, they say, I'm delighted uh, of the collaborative work between the Newburgh Redevelopment Commission and the Department of Psychology at North Carolina Central University. Now that a space has been provided for health education, health promotion and screenings for the residents of Newburn, we can move forward with efforts to address this disparate health outcomes. Your focus on holistic health and community development are aligned with long-term goals of the Department of Psychology at North Carolina Central University. As we have discussed, the Department of Psychology has a faculty who have an interest in cardiovascular disease, cancer, addiction, and the social determinants that impact health disparities. 
We currently have a master's degree program, which soon may be expanded to a doctoral program that will serve Eastern North Carolina. Given the expertise of our faculty, the need to provide mental health and the importance of health education and promotion in North Carolina, we are excited about working with the New Bern Redevelopment Commission, being a partner to consult and engage in grant partnership and program development to provide health and human service support to families in the greater Five Points community. As discussed earlier, we would love the opportunity to share our ethnodramas uh, to address disparate health among communities of color from our NCCU, this North Carolina Central University slash Duke project. The, the plays and, e and e ethnodramas have been an effective tool in, in increasing knowledge of HIV, various cancers, diabetes, hypertension, and addiction, as well as changing health-related behaviors and that's screenings and health monitoring. In my visits to New Bern and, particip and participation in community festivals and meetings, I believe that the community organizations and the city of New Bern are empowered and have the capacity to engage in health education and promotion, which is so vital, which is so vital at this period of those isolated by economics and geography. This letter serves as our support of our collaborative efforts in New Bern. And that is from Dr. Fisher, from PhD from North Carolina Central University. Okay, all right. You ready? Questions. <laughs> Question. When are you going to start? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think there's been uh, some dialogue about a $250,000 um, allotment, and I'm here today. Um, the original plan was to um, use that money to go into the McCarter House and overhaul it and do the fixing up and I guess make it the quote unquote Taj Mahal. But after talking with my partner who's in housing um, on the redevelopment commission, if we had $350,000, we can actually, as he said, we can actually put a building that is conducive um, um, to the health and wellness of that community. And the reason why I say that, when you look into the, um, the, the property over, over at, at the site, we can only use downstairs. We don't have the money to put the elevator in. We all know how much that costs in order to bring it up to code uh, for, for the disabled. So we would be regulated to, I think it's four rooms, five rooms at the bottom, and then the offices would have to be upstairs, but we don't think that would be enough space. So um, I pitched this to uh, the New Bern Redevelopment Commission. I think that we were all in lockstep, like that is way a better plan that we can actually, you know, put $250,000 in the old building, or just for another 100, we can have a brand new building and we'll be ready to vote. I, I, I just don't think it's going to, I, I, I think that'll be a great, great um, resource uh, and center for the community. Mr. Wallace, yes. Yes, Mr. didn't you um, mention that with this, like you said, a new facility, that will give you more leeway for getting bigger grants? Yes, ma'am. And working through uh, North Carolina Central, or was that Duke? Um, Central and Duke, would, would that, that would increase their participation. Okay. But they would be limited with the space that's already open. Okay. Not to mention the North Carolina Department of Human Health and Services, because we're extremely rural. They're just looking to, to get in support endeavors like that. So mm -hmm. can you give me a, just a, maybe a few of the resources that North Carolina Central and Duke would be able to provide for this, for the new center again? The main, the main resource is getting those uh, medical professionals there, okay. i.e. the clinical nurse who will supervise the interns, right. and then we'll have interns, uh, probably two or three at a time, getting their internship hours. Okay. And I don't know if, it, if a lot of you have done interns here assembled on this board, you know how long that goes. 2,000 hours is a long time. Mm -hmm. um, they've already said they're there, especially with the new site, they're all in. Oh, wow, that's so fantastic. Do you have a new site in site? No, yeah, that would be the site we would be, if we were afforded oh, so the extra tear that hundred, down. You yes, would tear sir. that down. Yes, sir. So what about parking? Would you be purchasing property on either side, the left or the right side? Mm -hmm. We were almost we were almost there for two adjacent uh, properties. We're still in continuous dialogue with the owner of that property uh, to come, come to a reasonable price, and then that will take care of it. So, but right now, I think we're, we're fine with parking. So with that being said, could you say um, the first of the year would be some, a site to look at to say that would be a good time to look at breaking ground? Uh, what is your thought on that? Um, I would think as soon as the uh, as soon as we have the money secured, I think we will start as soon as y'all call me and say go. 
uh, we will go ahead and start. I have a Kip Paragoy who is well known in the community as far as building. I mean, he could build it right there if we said to. So, uh, <laughs> Barry uh, said it all well, Ed, but in our studies of the Potter House over the past six months or so, uh, it, it became obvious that it was a old proverbial square peg in a round hole. And stand in front, stand of, the in front of the mic, please. They can't hear you. Sorry about that. And it, with the idea of several vacant parcels behind the Cotter House came up and we started exploring that and it just makes sense to build something new that could be designed efficiently and effectively to serve the purpose that we're trying to achieve rather than going in and gutting an existing structure, trying to bring it up the total code and do what we need, need to do and, and accomplish this is the thing. We do, have, you know, I, I have to play all the time with site plans and so forth. And, you know, we've roughed out, I, I have roughed out a rough site plan for a new structure to be about 30, 31, 3200 square feet of space. Uh, there's room for parking. Uh, so all, all those things are in place. And, and when you look at it again, it just makes sense. You have something new, you have something designed to function the way it's supposed to be fun functioning rather than trying to put that square peg in the round hole. It just doesn't make any sense from my perspective and I think the, the commission also feels that way. <clears throat> what, what would the plan be for the McCotter House if it's not going to be used for this? Are you going to rehab that for transitional housing? Yeah, that, that is, uh, if we can make everything else work, then we can do exactly what you're saying, which is take the McCotter House and do minor renovations to it to make it residential, which it already is, basically. So that, that works, and that's the extra benefit of doing what we're planning and thinking about doing is to kill two birds with one stone, increase the housing, the good housing stock in the neighborhood, as well as facilitate the community wellness center. Do you, do you have a rough estimate on what that would cost? No, because we, not right now, because we looked at, at estimating cost of renovating for health to be a community health center, which was a very significant cost. I think you probably saw those, some of those numbers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's because you had to do a lot of demolition work and restructuring, you know, the, the way the, the building was supported and so forth of that nature. Whereas we don't have to do a lot of that. We don't have to go busting out walls. We don't have to don't have to go into ADA specifications for doors and bathrooms and so forth to make it a residential structure. Okay, thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for coming and um, presenting this information. I know this has been a long time coming. Um, and you know, I fully support, you know, what you guys have going on. So if we don't have any more discussion, I personally would like to make a motion that we allocate the last $100,000 that's needed to complete this project um, to the Redevelopment Commission. Second. And this is out of ARP, right? Uh, correct. Yes. Do we need to ARP. rephrase it? We need to rephrase the motion. So do a total? No, what we need to do is we need to ask to um, vote um, to do a budget ordinance amendment on the next agenda. And that budget ordinance amendments to appropriate a total of 350000 in funds from ARP money. Second. <laughs> <laughs> On advice of counsel. <laughs> thank you. What she said. And I also, too, want to say thank you. You know, we've been at this a long time. And years, I know we've had, you know, that McCotter House, we worked very hard to make sure the Redevelopment Commission got the house. Yes, we had a few bumps along the way because the police had to take their designation off of it. And, Glad that that worked out, but you know, in looking at it and being realistic, it wasn't the end all be all to the mission that you were trying to achieve. And at the end of the day, if you have to, if it has to come down right. to achieve that mission, I think we're all good with that too. I mean, we get, we kill two birds with one stone if we had it the other way, but certainly if the other property doesn't work in our favor, then the idea is we need to get this up 
and operating to serve the community. So I know it's great to have a unanimous board behind you right now, even though we haven't taken a vote. <laughs> Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I support you all the way. Yes. <laughs> Alderman Odom. Yes. Motion carries, and we thank Don't you for your hard work. work. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you all so much. Thank you. Oh, to, God. All, to you all and your staff, all of the commissioners, yes. for such a great job that y'all have been doing. Thank, thank you. you so much. Woo woo. Thank you. Good job. Let's go to item number 10. Mayor, next item is to conduct a public hearing on the proposed budget for FY 22-23. At the May 10th meeting, I presented the proposed budget for the fiscal year, and the board adopted a resolution calling for a public hearing on this date to receive comments. The hearing was also advertised as required by statute. I do want to provide one bit of clarification. On page 36 of, of the budget, uh, this is under the governing board. There was an inadvertent in salary increase of 7% for the board. Traditionally, the board will make a recommendation uh, on salary increases, so this was inadvertent, and we're happy to do um, however the board would like for us to. Um, we're happy to answer any questions you may have. I'd like to make a motion that it remains. You know what? I'll second it. <laughs> okay, you have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Yeah, it's just that on that page, it's all lumped in, you know, to total salaries. So my question is, the page you gave us previously, which shows that the aldermen um, currently get $11,098. Oh. That includes uh, the travel stipend that we get, correct? So is the 7% mistake that's included in this, is it 83,613? Is this amount, 11098 times 7%, is that correct? That's what I'm trying to find out what the number is. <laughs> that, that is correct. This information was, was taken previously from um, what, what had previously been allocated to the board for, uh, that was in FY1920, those amounts. So if you add 7%, so I'm going to think of that. Less than a thousand dollar increase. So it still puts us, it would put us even with Hickory, everybody else. I mean, I think we were pretty good where we were at. Um, so the motion and the second is to increase the, the governing board's salaries by 7%. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to ask a question. Um, also, I don't know if you probably maybe aware of it or maybe knowledgeable of it. When was the last time this Board of Aldermen, not this particular board, but the Board of Aldermen per se has ever, has received an increase in salary? Great, is it? great question. We may have to get the clerk to, to look at that. I, I know that basically in FY nineteen twenty we combine the travel allowance in with, with the uh, your uh, monthly allotment. But Brenda, do we have a date? No, I'd have to look it up. It, it has not been one. Okay. I was just going to ask when you serve <laughs> at least Alderman. 20 years. That's been on the board for John, Mr. Kinsey, you've been up here in all the longest. It has not been one. Okay. No, it, so I think it's due time. I think it's due time, you know. Um, I don't know. I'd rather, not that it's not a lot of money. May I call a question? Questions being called. Uh, Let's so have a uh, roll call started with Alderman Odom. Are we not allowed to discuss? That's a question. Alderman Odom? No. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? No. Alderman Astor? No. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? No. Okay. The motion is denied. And that's what it has been all the time. No. Each time it's been brought up. <clears throat> other, other items in the budget? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, under the fees, 
that we have um, schedule of fees. There is an increase in parking rates. Um, and they are going from $20 a month per space to $35 a month. Um, and then it goes to $45 for the 24-hour residential spots that are being leased out. And this would not take place till January 1. That's how it's been billed. But um, the public and the people who rent have not been have not been advised of that increase, so I don't think it should be in the budget that we, I don't think we should adopt a budget where citizens haven't been advised that we're raising the prices. We can come back and amend it. If we want to go ahead July 1 and send out a notice that says in January 1 we'll be raising, and, and you know, I don't have a problem when you think about it, you know, t we charge $20 a month, that's less than a dollar a day for a parking space. Mm -hmm. I see $35 is, is not unreasonable. My issue is that I think the citizens should be made aware or the people who pay these parking leases should be made aware before we adopt something and then say, oh, well, guess what? We already adopted and they don't even have a chance to speak to it. So I would like it taken out if possible right. at this point. Could you just make a note of that and let's go through any other items yes, and see if we can incorporate Endless any changes in one motion possibly. <laughs> there was no motion. Other <laughs> concerns? Uh, I, I guess main one you feel like from a revenue stream we're good at the current rate. Yes, sir, that's correct. Um, I have a um, um, Foster. I, I'm aware of what the four percent uh, increase in um, ad valorem taxes would be, but the general public may not know what that 4% increase entails. So could you explain what that means, please? I think our base tax. Uh, excuse me, I asked Foster. Uh, I'm aware of it, but I'm, a lot of, uh, of our citizens may not be aware of why there's a 4%. Bear with me one second. Oh, value. Okay, I, I couldn't understand. You said valuation. <laughs> All right, thank you. Can I ask a question behind that? Because I want to make sure that I'm understanding it as well. So what that means is that the value of our properties grew by 4%. So our tax base grew by 4% in this past year. Is that correct? We haven't raised taxes. We are not charging anybody anymore. It's just the, va the total value of our tax base. Is that correct? I just want to that make is, sure. That is correct, okay. yes. Okay, if I'm going to speak to that, I want to make sure I'm speaking to it correctly. Exactly, because I didn't, I didn't want our citizens to think that we were going up 4% on the taxes. <laughs> now, this budget does not recommend an increase on the ad valorem okay. tax. Um, also, there is no recommended increase on utility rates, water or sewer rates either. Just for um, black and white, when's the last time we raised taxes uh, in the city of New Bern? Wow, great question. Um, it was during revaluation re because we are trying to get it. And I don't, well, I, Alderman Odom, did you all raise that between 13 and It was revenue 17? neutral. Excuse me? It was revenue <coughs> neutral. The revenue. rate was revenue okay. neutral. It was during the revaluation. I think we raised them at half percent with Mr. Y. When Epperson was was it, I think it was why. Yeah. I think tiny technically tiny. spring to when the state general assembly allowed the local option quarter <coughs> cent, we took that because we were having trouble funding the museum and other things. So right. it kind of technically went up then, I would think. And that was about 2010, somewhere in there. So we've kept it low. And are we still the lowest tax rate? in Eastern North Carolina? We are pretty close. I think there may be one more that's lower than us, but we have maintained that low rate. Now, 
there is a revaluation for the county that's going to be taking place this year as well. So next year at this time, we'll be evaluating that as well. And Mr. Hughes, I know you probably don't have this, but just because the Avalon tax base went up 4% doesn't mean that that's a, a net. You know, I mean, there are services the city provides, police, fire, and other services. So you, you might have a half percent net on that, or a one half percent. I don't really know myself, but just, you know, it's a kind of misnomer. People say that building permits are this, and we had a 6%. Here, we, you, you've got things associated with that that you don't want to leave out. I just think it's important to note that we've been able to have um, great budgets at least the four years that I've sat on the board and been able to accomplish a lot of things and haven't had to raise um, taxes. Hopefully the next board doesn't have to raise taxes, but um, I just think it's important that the citizens know that we are doing the best that we can to the top with city funds and taxes that come in. And one thing I also want you to understand as well is we, we have had to uh, uh, allow for inflation. Uh, cost of goods and services have gone up. Gas is, has gone up. We have not uh, pulled from the fund balance from the general fund to balance this proposed budget as well. And so um, we're quite confident in it. And um, of course, it, it's, 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 a, it's a general basic budget. We haven't gone through the roof on anything. And that's as we get to. Uh, an agenda item later on that's where you've got some of those ARP funds that you could possibly look at moving forward to look at funding some of those other requests that, that may have come across. Mr. Hughes, I know we had talked several times I think you indicated the last five years that the aquatic center had been in the black is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Have you looked at and of course it would be for a future board to decide if you were to enclose that and put canopy um, could do you see increased revenues there for the cost? I know when that was built, it was like three to four hundred thousand dollars to to encapsulate it. Right. Have you looked at that? For We've future? looked at it, and I, and I do have a a, a a lot of experience in aquatics. The biggest issue on that on that aquatic center is the the pool footprint is not very big. So mm -hmm. I think for a year round operation, we'd have to literally expand some of the swimming areas. If you, that the swim lanes themselves, it's not a full 25 yard uh, for swimming. You can't hold a swim meet there. So there would have to be some additional enhancements to that, that facility to make that work. Foster, um, where are we with the higher salary surveys that we're having the consultant work on? Yeah, they're still working on it. We expect to have that. Uh, unfortunately, it's probably going to be right around July, so we're going to be revisiting that really right at the 1st of July when we have all of that information. So in this budget, we have recommended a 5% co COLA and up to a 2% merit increase based on how uh, employee evaluations went. Um, that, that up to 7% does help a little bit on that salary survey, but it does show from the preliminary numbers that we have received from the consultant that we are still behind considerably. I, I, you and I have had this conversation and I'm just quite concerned about our, um, our linemen. I know they're leaving us and that's the last thing that we need to do is have our linemen leave us. So I, I would love to get that result so that, um, and it's probably not just them, it might be some other uh, divisions as well, but I'd love to get that salary survey in as quickly as possible. And you know, you talk about utility line, and it, every position we have is literally affected in this city, ranging from police, fire, utility linemen, public work staff no. as well. And we got to pay them, or they're going to go somewhere else to work, That's correct. without a doubt. And you know, I, I'm, I'm prepared to move on whatever it takes to make sure that we keep our, our staff in place. I agree. And since you're speaking of staff, um, our employees are so valuable to us. Um, we couldn't do this job without them. And I just want to thank you, Foster, and I hope that this doesn't change. Um, I see that you put um, $50,000 in for employees appreciation. So thank you for that. And, and I hope that we'll equate out together. 
city picnic or something that's going to boost the morale of our employees. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. Yeah, I make a motion to open up a public okay, hearing. Okay, anybody else at this time, we'll open a public hearing. If anybody from the public would like to come forward, ask questions, make comments concerning the budget for the ensuing year, you're welcome to come up at this time. I make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and second to close the public hearing. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. So, point of clarification at this time, the 7% salary increase for the governing board is still in the budget. We, no, we, we voted down. Yeah, I guess we, we voted it. down its staying, which I guess and we vote on it means next, it needs to be voted on. Order. To take out if we were going to so, do that. So two items that have been removed are the seven percent on, on the governing board, as well as the fee and charge for parking. Uh, no question. Um, when you say that seven percent, now are you speaking of the five percent cola as well as the two percent? Is that how you got the seven percent? That's correct. Okay. So the governing board, we don't get a cost of living raise. That, that's up to the board. To, <laughs> that's up to the board to give us direction on. <sighs> Work with, work with your next board, Barbara. <coughs> just, just ask the question. Um. <coughs> Mayor. Yes. I have a question for Alderman Bingle. Can, can you clarify, I'm not sure I followed you on that, the parking rate increase. So they won't get that increase until January 1 when, Correct. when their lease is renewed. Correct. So what are we taking out? Of the budget? Well, I didn't. I was afraid that if we adopted the budget within it now, and then people are up in arms, they don't even know that it's coming. There's been no advisement to say we are going to be raising the rates. How could they come and speak to it to say they liked it, they didn't like it? I, I felt that it wasn't fair, and that they should at least voice it. We can always go back and amend that fees as we've done many times before with fees. And I just thought, in the interest of transparency and putting everything out there, we should remove it at this point, send out notices that we will, you know, that we're going to be changing and at least let the public be aware of it. I don't so, know of any public that's aware that we were going to raise but the But approving this budget didn't necessarily mean that we're approving the rate Please. increase, does it? Okay. Well, then I agree with you. Yeah. And that's why I asked to vote out because I didn't want to vote on something that I felt nobody really knew about or would speak to. I mean, no one's here to speak to the budget, but I'll be the one to hear about. So I wanted to make sure that we were at least giving citizens some notice of, of that it will be going up and if they have any comments or questions and that we can just add it to the agenda and vote on it. That, that's fine. I'll just say I think it's still entirely too low, even at the projected price. It's When we had the parking committee, what, five years ago, it was supposed to be a lot more and I, I still think it's a steal personally. And especially if we're going to give them more time than... I think we need to take a hard look. I think it needs to be more than what it is. I totally agree. I mean, I, you know, again, where can, that's not even a dollar a day. You know, a dollar a day would be like 30. We're putting into $35. Where can you go for a dollar a day and park your car? New Bern. New Bern. Yeah. So, um, you know, everybody's costs are going up and what have you. But I, I think that it, I'm more concerned about the notification. That's all my issue. Y'all don't agree, that's fine, but I just wanted to bring I'm it up. I'm fine with it being removed in transparency. I mean, I don't know yeah. what the holdup is. It's, when yeah. we have you voted on the budget, we're doing that on the next meeting. I, I, that's what I, I thought we were going to do, but I'm not sure. Prepared to wait. So well, item number 10 is to conduct a public hearing on the proposed budget. Yeah. Where do we actually... Where, where do we actually adopt the budget? Do we do that now or do we do that? No, that, that will be at the next meeting. Right. Okay. That's, so what I think. That's what I thought. That's yeah. going to be the next meeting. So by then the changes will be updated and we'll be good to go. That's yep. correct. Um, and then you'll have a bound copy of the budget. Yep. <clears throat> Another binder? It won't be a binder. This will actually be a bound, uh, similar to what you had last year that has a spiral bound. Oh, you get the thumb drive. I'll take a thumb drive this year. <laughs> okay, so, and so next meeting, or 
is the board going to make motions to change a few of those things or you're taking out now? Yeah, we're, we're, we're taking those those two items out now. So. Well, have you got direction from the board? I, I assume that you're assuming that, which is very dangerous that because the board did not vote to accept 7% that you will be taking it out. Is that? That's correct. There was a motion on that on the 7%. Um, anything else before we move? Does she need to make a motion to remove this stuff or you not? You can, just to be clear. Okay, well, that's fine. I make the motion that um, we remove the um, parking increased increase. parking fees at this time. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? You want a roll call, Scott? Yes, sir. Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Adam? Yes. Motion carries. Any other items? Okay, let's, uh, let's go to the next item. Okay, next item is conduct a public hearing and consider an ordinance to annex a portion of tax ID 8-209-25001. As an authorized representative for Weyerhaeuser, Cliff Parson requested a 9.25 acre portion of that property be annexed. The, the property is a proposed future site for Thales Academy. After conducting a public hearing, the board is asked to consider the adoption of an ordinance to annex this property. Uh, I also want to make note that uh, in your packet, the last plat in that package is not relevant to, to this item, so just disregard that last page on there. And maybe in your motion, do that because if this is public record, then one might assume that page is part of it and it's not. Does the board have anything before I open the public hearing on this? At this time, I'm going to open a public hearing. Anybody would like to come forward, ask questions, make comments about the sign, you're more than welcome to do it. I'm uh, Cliff Parson from Warden Smith. I'm here on behalf of Warehouser. Happy to be bringing this in front of you. It's the next phase in the exciting West Newburn development. I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any other Excuse public me. comment at this time? Questions, comments? Cliff, it might be in here, but is Thales Academy a school? It is a private school. They're out of carry from what we understand. <clears throat> I don't represent them, but they do K through, they do different stages. They do K through 12, pre-K through 12. I'm not sure what their plan is uh, for New Bernard. So. Will this become a non-taxable piece of property? I am not sure about that. Um, Scott, would this be? I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, Why it, would we I, want I'm, to I'm pretty sure it's, a non, it's a good question. Good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a non-profit, um, and it's going to be used for a non-profit purpose. We, we'll have all the area around it, so you probably do want zoning and regulation on it just to keep control of the area. And in our development agreement that we signed a few years ago obligates whenever we do a new plat and before before we convey that property out according to that new plat we annex the property in. <laughs> everything around it would be annexed as well, correct? Oh, yes, so is everything around it annexed at this point or they just want this specific? That's how I was trying it's to fully no. So it's, it's contiguous to the D.R. Horton parcel, um, but there is some space between the Comet apartments and this parcel. This is east of the common apartments, right up against the uh, power line there. Cliff ultimately won't this be encompassed within a fully annexed area? Yes, yes, ultimately everything will, there will be. Just making sure I yes, ma no. provide Absolutely. services there, Absolutely. Yeah. something that's not yep. going to gain us anything. <clears throat> if you be the board's pleasure to close the public hearing. Second. Beg pardon? I make a motion to close public hearing. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same. 
There's no more comments. I make a motion that uh, we annex the partial ID 820925001. And delete and delete the last page of that exhibit. I don't have a copy. Yeah, well, uh, I think I took mine out, but let me see. So, um, did you get a second to that? Yeah, I second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 12. Next item is to consider a resolution approving a lease agreement with the Newburn Craven County Area Farmers Market. The current lease with the Farmers Market will expire on June 30th of this year. A new five year lease is proposed effective July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2027, at the uh, current rate of $500 per month. These terms have been reviewed and approved by the Farmers Market uh, members themselves. If you have any questions, we're happy to ask, answer them. Board have questions? I'd just like to recognize the board chair, Mr. Hunt. So thank you for being here tonight. Uh, and Mr. Morrison, uh, he's the financial brains, Mr. Morrison, because I see the budgets every month. So I want to thank them for their good work and, um, you know, the continued growth of the market. They do a great job. And we're glad to have them. So with that being said, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution approving a lease agreement with the New Bern Craven County Area Farmers Market. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Um, next item number 13, uh, my good friend Mr. Massengale from uh, Eddie with uh, Metronet is going to come up in just a second and you know I, I want you to do all those good things you do like updating and maybe tell a couple of fishing stories and uh, but anyway you have any comments about that item before he no sir let's bring him up and let him explain we really appreciate all you're doing for our city Eddie Eddie Maskell thank you mayor members of council um, we, um, as you all know, we're building uh, fiber in New Bern. We're going to turn you guys into a gigabit city. Um, we're expecting our first customers in August of this year here in New Bern. Um, we entered into an agreement with the city back in April of last year of 2021, where we outlined what the services we're providing, gigabit service, symmetrical, uh, telephone, and also uh, linear video, video channels. And what we're asking today is that to amend that agreement to um, drop the linear video. The fact is, less than one percent of our customers now are taking linear, linear video. They're everybody taking it over the top. They're streaming. Whether if, you, if you've got Netflix, you're already streaming. So um, we'll still offer the internet. We'll offer you know gigabit uh, symmetrical internet. We'll offer telephone, and we'll also we have on our website where when we sign customers up. They can still get all the channels, including local channels, but rather than get them through Metronet, they'll actually go direct. So, like, for example, like my wife likes to walk, watch Hallmark Channel. So, uh, if you, you put in whatever you want to watch, and then on the website, and it'll tell you which service you can get those from, and then you just pay, you just you just order direct from that from that provider, and then with us, you'll just be buying uh, the internet and, and phone if you like. So, we're just asking if we can amend that agreement uh, to drop the linear video. Wow. <clears throat> Any questions about it? Yeah. I mean, I think my only concern is that when you offered it, it was a package deal, and now if you're, you know, I understand the increase in rates. If I if I want to be able to view, I have to go to each individual provider, and then my bill is going to be nine ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine to get these channels. Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, you don't go to each individual one. For example. 
um, you can go to our website and whatever channels you choose to watch, mm -hmm. then it'll show you which package or that you need to order it from. And it's just one price. You're just not paying it to us. Um, you know, if you currently, now if you already have Netflix or Hulu, you're paying those direct anyway. But at the end of the day, you're gonna save quite a bit of money overall buying it direct because it's really what everybody's been wanting. You know, let me buy what I want and, and not take what I don't want. So it's an opportunity for, you know, for you to save a lot of money and choose what you wanna watch. Do you have any examples of those price ranges? Uh, of, of what, which For price? packages, if we're removing one service, do you have any examples of what a package would be that it would cost me if I wanted to get certain it's, channels? It's going to depend on what you want. You can go to our website and you can actually see it, but it's going to depend on what you want. And, and you know, you may want ESPN, you may, whatever you may want. So it's going to vary. A lot of it you can get through YouTube TV. Uh, you know, Paramount's one. Um, that you know, we use at, at my house. We subscribe to Paramount. We get all the channels that we want, plus our local channels. But yeah, it's so. At the end of the day, you're gonna save a lot of money. So I don't, I don't know if I understand all this stuff. But tell me, what is it that you're offering that people are? You're saying people are not accepting? Uh, video. In other words, when you like currently with your current incumbent, you've got you know your telephone, internet and all the channels. You've got a, a package of channels. And what we're... So in television, basically. Television, yes. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is drop the channels, but we're going to show you as a customer how to get those channels direct. You'll see, that's a pass-through for us. We don't originate the content. And when, as, the, as the providers, if they adjust that, those prices, then we have to adjust prices. So rather than do that, we're just going to provide what we do and do best is we're going to turn you into a gigabit city, but we're going to show your customers how to get their content direct. So, so right here looking up Hulu TV, Live, Disney, ESPN, $69.99 a month for that package, including with your internet cost, right? So it, it necessarily is like getting a, a package from Sutherland. I was under well, the impression that MetroNet coming in was going to be extreme benefit for the, the customers and the prices and stuff so yeah I was so well. how, how many people do you currently have signed up in New Bern? yeah we don't have any yet we're gonna so how do you know nobody's interested in it well based on our other 250 communities uh, we're getting less than one percent of our new customers are actually signing up for it is it a difference in the infrastructure what you put in as I mean well what it is is now because people with, with high-speed internet, with, with uh, fiber, um, you know, there's no buffering, there's no, so you can stream, you can stream everything. And, uh, you know, whatever you want to watch, you can pick and choose what you want to watch. And whereas before, it was a package. You had to tell, you know, if you didn't want ESP, ESPN or Disney, it still come with this package. Or if you wanted Disney, you had to get that, you know, the whole package. So it, it enables the customer to get what they want and choose what they want. Is it, my last question, is it possible to have case by case, because there will be some elders that don't stream TV and want the natural well, TV to be able to have it? And well, they, can still, they can keep it because we're not, we're not replacing Seven your weeks. incumbent Seven provider. Weeks. All we're offering is an Seven option weeks. and right. better technology. They don't have to take our service. If people want to keep their channels, so you know they can, you know, stay with suddenly. No, and I totally yeah. understand that. I think when the big news came that you guys were coming in, everybody in the city of New Bern, thirty-two thousand people were frustrated with suddenly. So with the new services and being able to have that opportunity, I just, I'm just a little disappointed because there is a population that mm -hmm. doesn't stream, doesn't use internet, and doesn't want to pay suddenly because it's out every day. And then with your great service coming in with fiber, we're in the mindset they were going to be able to switch to the same service. So I'm wondering if there is a, a, a way to not remove everything or let it be case by case because a lot of we have a retirement population and not everybody is on the Internet. Well, the, uh, if they're not on the, in other words, they're not going to take our service. It, it's not going to affect them. But okay. if, if you, you can still get the same thing you want. But to answer your question, we're not going to, we don't want to provide linear video because of the cost of it. We have to buy it, and then we have to pre then we resell it. But when you present it 
to us. That's right. right. And that's right. Why. He presented it, an internet company. They were right. here to bring us internet, period. Right. Interesting. That's what it was, internet service, yeah. because the suddenly internet service was so bad or so unreliable, people's internet was going out, so they couldn't get, you know, it, it was more internet than it was chat TV channels. Metro, I mean, we're, we're an internet provider, you know, we're, we're a fiber company. Yeah. And TV. so when we build up, we're build a city, and we've been doing this a long time. Um, at one time, you know, we offered, and we're still doing a lot of markets, we offer video. But the point is, is nobody's taking it any longer. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we come into a market and we've got less than 1% of our people are taking it, it's not worth us providing it because we're showing them how to get the same thing they want another way. I don't even know if you have a question. Ed, Eddie, whenever you originally made your presentation, mm -hmm. would it be possible for a customer to have taken the TV but not have your internet service? No. Okay. So I, I think that's the big difference. Right. So with Suddenly, you can get Suddenly TV mm -hmm. without taking their internet service. You guys are offering internet service right. and TV was a part of that if, it, if they wanted it. That's right. So for example, my Suddenlink bill, I think now, is up to $129 a month, and I don't have TV. I pay an additional, whatever, $20, $30 for Hulu to stream. Right. So what I'm hoping is, is that I can keep my Hulu account, mm -hmm. switch from Suddenlink to Metronet, and your internet's going to be cheaper and more reliable, and I'll still have the same Hulu that I have right now. That's right. That's right. I, I can't stream because my internet won't allow me to get Hulu. I pay Hulu and I can't. I get another well, box. You know? and, and you know another thing too, and that's the whole advantage of having you know fiber anyway. I mean it's because of the speeds. But um, and, and you know another thing too for people like Snowbirds and people who have two homes, you know they can share it. You know if you've got uh, if if one person's got YouTube TV, they can share it with their children. You know, so. So so sir. Right here. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> so, in layman's terms, for me and others that may be listening, so what you're saying is right now, you provide our internet, mm -hmm. get our channels. If we, like right now, have Prime and I have Netflix, you wouldn't provide that service, but you have the internet available there where I can go to to purchase those. So now, I already have Netflix, I already have Prime, mm -hmm. so how is that going to affect me? I have to, it won't change nothing, correct? It won't change anything. In I'll still words. be doing, paying for it like I'm paying for because, it. Because see, your, okay. your Hulu and your Prime now, you're just getting it through suddenly. Gotcha. Which, you know, they're not going to have the speeds we have. So you're going to have the same thing you've got, because you're paying Hulu direct now. Right. And you'll still continue to pay on direct. You'll just okay. do it, you'll just stream it through our fiber service rather than gotcha. uh, what you currently have. So if a, I'm sorry. <laughs> so if a customer signs up with you and, and you provide them with a Hulu channel, basically all you're doing is passing the, the cost of the Hulu channel on through them. Well, right. Well, th that's right. If, if they're, they're really signing up directly with Hulu, right? Utilizing the internet, right? So basically, no TV channels, straight internet and, and telephone. And phone. And right then you phone. create a toolbox where if I want HBO Max, I can get it for $9.99. That's right. And your website lets me hit the button and it takes me to HBO Max, correct? Right. And then you can go to our website. You can choose whatever channels you want. You know, if you like to watch, um, you know, name it, whatever it is. And you can put them in there. And then it will recommend a package, whether it be, you know, Hulu or whatever it may be. Because it'll, this is what has everything that you want, and then you just pay them you direct, just like you're doing now. Well, you're still looking one gig and a one to one, right? That's right. Gig with service, symmetrical, up and down. Awesome. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we adopt the resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a minute of make agreement with Metro Fiber Net at OC. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? I, I just I don't have a discussion about this, but I wanted to ask Mr. Massengill a question. Any idea? I, I represent the ward east of Newburn, across the river. Any idea when uh, my constituents would be able to get Metronet? I'm telling you, if you walked over there today, you'd sign up almost every one of the people over there because the, the service over there is terrible. 
we've talked to probably a few of them. It's getting across over there. That's the issue right now. And we're working on Dan Neppel, who's our uh, VP of construction over here. He's actually working on solutions on that. But I don't know where we are on it. That's the answer. We've got to get over there. Okay. So yeah. no estimated time frame as to when you think. No, I don't. I can find out and let you know. But that would be helpful yeah. because I. In fact, you. I wrote it down when I talked to you earlier. Um, uh, tell me again which communities those were. Um, well, I'd start with Taberna, yeah. Evans Mill, Blue Water Rise, especially, and even Longleaf Pine. And there's several of them right in that area. Right. I, I know the book reads. Um, Carolina Colors has their own service. Right. And, and also to keep in mind that, um, you know, as we, you know, as we build New Bern, we're building our way to North Morgan City. Um, you know, this is a massive undertaking for us. And so to your point, you know, one of the things, because, you know, we're funding this 100% ourselves. Um, and the, the decision or the ask to, to amend this agreement, we don't want to take anything away. We want to actually give you more. Mm -hmm. We want to give people, because what it is, is people are figuring out they can get it cheaper by just going direct, by going over the top. Mm -hmm. um, you made a comment that um, August 1st would be your first customer. Mm -hmm. What area is that outside of um, his request? Because there's communities that need internet service that are suffering in low-income communities. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. It's not in my notes. Is there someone that is a liaison so I can get that up? Yes, you can actually go to our construction website, um, and they can it'll tell you you know where we're building it, and you can actually even put in your address, and it'll tell you when what service will be available. Okay. I mean, I work for an internet company, but I'm technically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, we do have motion to second. If uh, there's no more discussion, we have roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? To agree with the agreement. <laughs> to amend I'm the sorry, agreement. I stepped out, I had to use the ladies. To amend the I'm agreement. I'm 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Hey, we really appreciate all that you've done. and. Um, if you would, uh, Sabrina, I don't remember who all, Mr. Hughes, some others, um, you actually had the, your CEO in New Bern. Yes. And uh, could you, the, the folks that were here, could you just go through when we were in the conference room at that thought enough of New Bern to come all the way from? Well, I mean, uh, on why are we going to New Bern? No, I mean, just it was uh, overwhelming to get the whole corporate down here. And well, of course, when we met with Charlie out at the electric department, I mean, you had a who's who in there, and it's just. Well, you have to understand this. Um, you know, I, was, I was with business development at that time. I'm now, I've been, I'm in government affairs, but I'm same role. But um, when the mayor and I first started talking, and um, and I was recommending New Bern to our company, because the way it works is, is, is when we were looking for additional markets to build, because we were building Fayetteville, um, and I reached out to New Bern, we're a privately held company, and we're the largest privately held uh, private with internet uh, company in the country. But our leadership is extremely hands-on. So before we actually uh, pull the trigger, so to speak, you know, our leadership actually comes to the market, we drive the market, we meet the leadership, and because what we're looking for, we want to be, um, you know, because we fund the, the construction and the operation of it, we're just looking for, you know, a partnership, so to speak, with the city. We want to work with a city that wants us here. And that's one of the reasons why uh, John Sinelli, uh, you know, he, he came into the market to meet the mayor and, and, and meet you folks. And, and we literally drove the market. And, and that's, you know, it's, it's very important to us as a company. We're, we're very impressed that, that your upper corporate came to New Bern and uh, well I mean New Bern we it's, appreciate it's, what you did. It's a very important market to us. <clears throat> it's, it's very important. This this whole area is very important to us. Yeah. Well you take care of my friend and be back in town let us know. I will. Thank you, Mayor. Good to Thank see you. Folks. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go to item number fifteen. Mayor Fort next time consider a resolution extending I'm sorry I didn't mean to miss out on the waste <laughs> industries thing. 
<laughs> so the next item is consider a resolution extending the agreement with Lace Industries doing business as GFL Environmental for Commercial Services. The existing five-year agreement with Waste Industries for commercial pickup and dumpster service will expire on June 30th of this year. Considering the current market for these services, scarcity of qualified and capable providers, plus uncertain economic factors, staff is proposing the current agreement be extended for a term not to exceed five years. Um, we do anticipate the cost of dumpster services to increase by 4.8%. Uh, we feel comfortable that we can absorb those costs without having to pass that on to the customer. Ooh, that's awesome. Mayor, if there's no questions, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution extending the agreement with Waste Industries LLC, DBA, GFL, Environmental LLC for commercial services, as well as extending the agreement with Waste Industries LLC, GFL, Environmental for residential services, which is item 14 and 15 for clarification. Second. Motion and second is there discussion. Seeing none, let's have a roll call. Starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom. Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Beagle? Yes. Okay, uh, next item would, I don't know if you guys want to lump these together. I do yes. have a question about item number sure. 16, and it's a very minor question, but uh, all your examples on the front, you talk about the $5,000 bid, and all these are, are okay <coughs> other than um, your $5,000 on the first page, and on the last page, your example is $2,000. I just want to make sure we're talking, because it's 604B, 604B Street, and 604B Street. Is that last page, and how, where did the $2,000 offer come from on the last page versus $5,000 on the first page? On yeah. number 16. Yeah. That's just a typo. It's a $2,000 offer if you look at the offer to purchase. Okay, so it's not a $5,000 bid. No. The cover sheet's the only... Well, um, so I thought... Like what was our policy on the Odom on tax values? What's the present? 50%. The tax value 50%. on this is 3900 so that 2000 is more than the 50%. It's just an error on the Okay, so the, so the first page is, is not 5000 it's two thousand, right? Thirty-nine hundred. Thank you. Okay, if you guys want to lump those or whatever. So, my mayor, do you have a question? Well, I, you know, I always like to make sure that in selling these, and, and I want everybody to know that signs are working, from what I understand. These. All of these came as a result of putting signs up that say this property for sale. Perfect. So it's making everybody work. But I always like to know because, you know, we work so hard to make sure we're protecting neighborhoods and doing all that kind of good stuff. And when you sell these properties off and are they using them for parking lots? Do they understand? You know, I just get concerned. I so that first one, Alderman Bingo, Bingo, is that in the... Redevelopment. No, none of these area. are in the redevelopment. The right. Avenue B is, um, I know exactly, I went over there, I talked to the lady, as a matter of fact, and she owns the property next door, and she was concerned somebody might come and get it when she saw the sign. So, you know, she's buying it to add it to her piece of property she owns, which that's okay. I don't know, Barbara, do you know what, what this piece is on Duffy Street? Yeah, he, he's, he wants to add it to his property's green space. Same, same thing, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what... Um, yeah. So, you know, that's the only thing I was just curious about. Um, and on Wilmington Street, same thing. Just they're going to add it to their property. So I've checked both of those out. So, yeah, I say lump them together. Mayor, I make a motion that we adopt the resolution initiating the upset bid process for 604B Street, 210 Duffy Street, 2200 Grace Avenue, 2101 Woodland Ave, 1703 Wilmington Street, and 2302 McKinley Avenue. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Let's go to item number 22. Next item is to consider a resolution accepting American Rescue Plan earmark funds from the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. 
As previously announced, the city was, was appropriated $75,000 in American Rescue Plan funding. The funding will be used uh, for study and analysis of frequently flooded areas in Newburgh. To formally accept the grant, the city must adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute and offer an acceptance form. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution <laughs> accepting American Rescue Plan earmark funds from the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries, item number 23. Next item is to consider an ordinance to establish a stormwater study and analysis project fund in relation to the previous item. Uh, this project will involve an investigative hydrologic study of frequently flooded areas within the city. Specifically, this will cover the North Hills, phase one and phase two. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. You have a, <laughs> will you say something? No, I was just gonna make a motion. I'll go ahead and make the motion. <laughs> Were you going to say something? I was going to make a motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to uh, adopt the ordinance to establish a stormwater study and analysis project fund. Second. Motion and second. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Dingle. Alderman Dingle? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom. Yes. Motion carries. I'm number 24, Mr. Hughes. Before we get into that, as far as budget ordinances, I want to make sure I understand that, that the $250,000, we've had this discussion before, of, of the 21-22 budget for sidewalks. You, you have those all lined up, and that money all is going to be spent in 21-22. That's correct. That $250,000 has been encumbered. The contractor is currently working on those projects. Thank you, sir. Yes, Go sir. ahead, item number 24. Next item is to consider a budget ordinance amendment for FY21-22. At this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Ostrom to present this item. Um, Chief, what's the um, current um, procedure um, when it comes to uh, a device that needs to be unlocked for access as evidence? What do we do now that you can actually publicly speak on? <laughs> so if I understand your question, mm -hmm. what's the procedure for access and data in, from a cell phone or other electronic device? Yeah, like the policy or the law, the rights, because this grant. Right, right. Yeah. So it, it is the same as the search for any other item. Um, either we have consent or we have to have a search warrant. Mm -hmm. um, so in the, in the case of an iPhone or an Android, if we want to extract data from that, we have to produce the uh, relevant probable cause mm -hmm. uh, to a magistrate or judge to obtain that search warrant. Once we have that search warrant, then the gray key allows us the ability to access that data. We cannot just simply do it on our own. Okay. That's not, that would not be constitutional. So this makes it easier in the process once you get the um, authorization to do so. That is correct. Okay, yes. thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> that was my question. So yeah, oh, you. sorry. Very good. <laughs> All right. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a budget and ordinance amendment for FY2021-22. 
Second. Motion and second is there discussion. Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Beagle? Yes. Motion carries, item 25. Mayor, next time is a discussion on American Rescue Plan funds. So we were originally allocated $6,704,351. Uh, currently we have allocated $2,350,000. So we have approximately $4,354,351 yet to allocate. So at this time I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Ostrom and she's going to cover what uh, we have previously recommended, and she'll also have uh, uh, some recommendations from the all. Oh, I just need that number again. The four, how much we have left? Four million three hundred fifty-four thousand three hundred fifty-one dollars is yet to be allocated. But if you did it, if we, if we did it seven ways, which uh, allows the mayor an opportunity, it would be uh, $627,000 allocated to each individual um, representative on the board to be able to make a decision with the funds. I'll just add my spiel. Been on this board for four and a half years. I'm gonna be exited. I was here during all of these pandemics and getting this money, and I wanna be able to spend that money and for However long people have sat in war to, Pembroke has not been able to grow in regards to the infrastructure. The least we can do, and I'm gonna fight for, is $450,000 for the project that George put together that puts sidewalks at least around the community center. Every ward, every person that sits on this board has sidewalks in that area, in their area. They would like some sidewalks. This is a small project and I will yield the rest of my money to anybody else's project, but $450,000 is available, and regardless of any Stanley White or elevator, if we didn't have the pandemic and this money didn't come through, we were still gonna have debt, where we were gonna have to pay for things 
for the elevator for Stanley White, and it's going to be rolling off. Allow this community to get their sidewalks, please. That's all I'm asking for. Um, support sidewalks there. Thank you. Um, can I have um, Al? Could you come up, please, Mr. Cablay? If I'm pronouncing your name right. That was pronounced correctly. Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> I just want to know at what point are you or your your staff at the um, Garden Street sidewalk project? Well, currently we have completed the survey. Okay. Door-to-door -door survey has been completed. The, we've received what letters that we did send out to every property owner certified. Okay. Uh, we have received back approximately uh, uh, 50 percent of those letters that we sent out. Uh, we're compiling what. Uh, has been said um, in those letters from the door-to-door uh, -door survey, which was myself and the new sense of abatement officer that conducted it, they were all in support of having sidewalks. Um, we have uh, hired a uh, survey uh, company um, that is experienced in doing these types of sidewalk improvements where right-of-way is really a concern, and that's what we have in that area because there's some um, question as far as deeds and how the right-of-way has been placed in relationship to the road mm -hmm. and so that we're in process of doing that. We hope to have the, uh, the alignment of the right-of-way with the structures that are there currently in uh, about 30 days. Okay. Uh, we spoke to the uh, surveyor and um, they're still in process of doing all the research. So, so you really don't have a figure right now? for how much it's going to cost? We did do an estimate okay. of, yes, the linear foot of what it would take to take it all the way down to Chapman from okay. up to Raleigh, and that's uh, the 85000 which okay. is a conservative figure. We're just uh, hedging, you know, that the right-of-way is going to allow us the, the room to, to place the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question about that, Barbara? Mm -hmm. So that eighty-five. I because I knew this was underway and we've been working on this, is that in this year's sidewalk budget or is that going to, that would not be in any of it, so we, it would come out of the ARP money? Okay. It, it could or it could be one of the sidewalk projects in the next budget. That's correct. Well, I would support that as well. So, when you say the next budget, are you not talking about 22-23? The FY23, we, we have recommended $250,000 in sidewalk improvements. So them from that as well. Okay. Right. Could is the key word. <laughs> so it's not on this list, but I've been um, advised that, you know, it's a real issue, broad and middle where the Chelsea is, that crossing area there. I mean, I get complaints from the citizens in the historic districts and even some of our visitors. If you sit there and watch, even though you have to push a button for the flashing lights, people don't do it. The people, the lights are flashing and people are not stopping. So there's a system they can put in where the lights are in the road. Is that correct, Mr. Yes, 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 the correct. lights are in the road and it's activated by walking. Oh, and it, it flashes up. And also, too, this would include a signal for the visually impaired mm -hmm. so they could cross the street. And, you know, early on in our term, we had people come and talk to us about that, and I believe that's 120000 Is that correct? That's correct. So, um, potentially, I support I that. Would, I would, you know, throw that in there. If we have to, if not, we're going to have to find somewhere else to pull it from. But we need, we need to, we have to do that because it's really dangerous there. I wish we had a traffic light, but a traffic light, we're talking 300000 for a traffic light. I will say that it's very annoying when you have to figure out like who's going or so I mean it, I'm sure there have been accidents in that area too so I support. Officer, when is the um, new bike and pedestrian plan going to be presented to the board? Uh, so basically the, the last public input meeting was held today so the, the new bike care plan should be coming to the board within the next three or four weeks. And that's probably going to be the racetrack road yeah. project. When yes. are we looking at that? Because the kids are still walking in the middle of the street after school. So where are we at with that? So there's currently no funding for for that, and that is a consideration for uh, for American Rescue Plan funds. What about the monies that we 
have set aside that we have chosen from. It, for for that, so no funds have currently been set aside for the racetrack road project. Mm -hmm. Well, Johnny, if you support my 450 and sidewalk, the remainder of, I would uh, yield it over to your uh, $1 million project. I'm in support of kids um, not walking in the street. We, I mean, we don't have a lot of amounts for each person. I know, but I'm just speaking of that if it was decided that we can all work together so that maybe everybody on the board can have, uh, you know, a success out of this funds that can go to the community. I mean, that's what the funds are there for. We've gone over hours and meetings of what we should do with the money. It's very easy for us to just make the decision or we go ahead and allow it to be split seven ways and allow the individual <coughs> alderman mayor to determine how the funds are used in the project. I'm only asking for $450,000 and I've been asking it since three, three years now. Yeah. So. Don't do it for me, do it for Primbrook. They would like some sidewalks, and we have the funds. Um, also, instead of bringing Al back up, do you know if the stormwater pumps um, project, system project, is underway? Have, have you have y'all hired an engineer, or are you doing a survey? What is going I, on I with am going to bring Al back up on this. We had a discussion on this the other day, okay. and can, Al can give an update on that. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. They also have the operations uh, superintendent here that can help out with what uh, your concerns are out there. Um, so we have some, some issues um, with that. Um, specifically, I think your concern is that you want to know if it'll be fixed with a design. With an, right, Alderman? Yes. What, what, we had a meeting in February in reference to this um, about <coughs> What, what type of engineering design of services or whatever is needed for the area to eliminate some of the flooding over on the Simmons, North Hills, even um, the Trappist Trail, which wasn't included in it. But so at what point are you with that information for it is some numbers or estimate or study or engineering well, North, report or whatever? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. The North Hills is, is part of that study. That's okay. what the, the board acted on tonight. We have that funding in place. It's completely grant funded. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're already in the throes of that first phase that will be beneficial in helping out with that area. It's, uh, it, it, to me, it's, it's a pretty complicated um, situation because it's not just one silver bullet that's going to fix that whole drainage area. Operationally speaking, I think that's where um, we need to understand. And quite frankly, I, I don't understand exactly how we got to the place that we are with uh, all of our systems that we have out there. We have undersized pumps. We have uh, ditches uh, that drain uh, into areas that I, I think I understand originally that there were wetlands. Uh, that's how the whole area was developed. But uh, essentially with, with the area sitting as low as it is, it, it'll take some steps, a comprehensive look of which things like the North Hills drainage will help. Um, and as we continually try to analyze it and make it a little improvements along the way uh, will help us. Um, but there is no silver bullet. I just want to emphasize that there isn't one solution, but there will be a series of those that we'll make that will help dewater that area. Um, I mean, and that, that's what I'm looking for. That's yes, what I'm seeking for. Yes, and that's what, what is the first solution to eliminate, try to eliminate some of that flood storm water? Well, we're on our way with this study with, 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 with the North Hills drainage. Okay. And Al, we are, yes, Al, could you say how long it will take to complete phase one of that study and the estimated time frame to complete phase two of that study? Well, we met uh, preliminarily with, with the uh, consultant, which one of us represented here with uh, Mr. Meadows, and we're confident that we can get uh, at least the direction we're headed to for the study to be completed within 60 days. In 60 days, we'll be able to move maybe even quicker into the second phase of that same study and be a little bit further along as far as these improvements that we can recommend. Again, keep in mind, it's going to be a comprehensive right. plan. I don't mean to sound like we will have the panacea, but we'll be on the way so we can make some solid recommendations to, to the board 
and with the funding that is limited uh, so that we are making the best decisions with the best intelligence and best data uh, possible. Avery, is there anything you want to add? We really, oh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. We really need to get the data before we jump on any uh, <coughs> any any type of uh, half cock solution. We um, if we don't get the data that we need, we're not going to uh, make. We're going to waste our money. I don't want to waste our money. So that seventy-five thousand dollars will cover your study, correct? Yep, that'll okay. give us the data Fine. that we need. Then we'll go. We'll start making comprehensive decisions so we can figure out what we're going to do to fix the problem because there are some things that we can do to make the situation better and the feasibility study will say to us this is the most effective plan and this is the most ineffective plan so we won't we can throw two or three of them away and we got these really good plans to act on and then we look at that and say hey we need this amount of money to get started or either to complete it. It may be something that we can put in for a few hundred thousand or it may be a few, a few million. I mean, we, we, that's what, what the study is going to, where it's going to put us. Okay. And this will be, this will, this will be a, a well thought out plan. I, we're not going to waste time or money and do something that we can't, that's not feasible. Okay. So. Just to conclude our, our part in, in trying to share with you the frustrations that we have with the system as well. It's undersized, everyone understands that as far as just from an operational standpoint. But recommending, standing here before you, recommending improvements that we know in, in our heart and what we know about the drainage systems out there would, would solve the, the problems as you see them and as the residents see them would be, um, that would be disingenuous. And that's not what we would do. Um, we stand before you with the best data that we can come up with. We believe this is the best start because there will be some innovation looked at it. We've already seen that. Um, and what will come before you will be um, well thought out. Like so within your study that's going on right now, if within that $75,000, is that included in the engineer's report as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, both of you. <coughs> Well, <laughs> well I, I am amenable to splitting this money if, if there's, if other alderman, you know, um, at the time don't have any, any issues with that because. We do have a lot of needs. I think that's just, the yes. infrastructure has suffered, especially in the older parts of town. Yes. But also too, we have big debts on us. I know there's some concern about the elevator debt as well as the Stanley Stanley White debt. And I want to mention this, I was going to bring it up under new business, but I'll bring it up now, um, if it's okay with the board. Um, you know, the, the state of North Carolina has a $3 B billion dollar surplus. And so I've ha I'm having some conversation with um, our representative, uh, Steve Tyson, and his recommendation is for us to send a letter to maybe ask for some of the funds um, and we need a, a number, a million and a half, two million. It's recommended we probably should ask for two million to go towards the elevator since it is a key infrastructure pro project where our citizens can't get in the building and the elderly and it's ADA accessible. And he thinks that might be a project they might look at and fund. We would certainly copy um, our Senator Jim Perry and then um, as well as uh, the appropriations chair, uh, Justin Sane. So, um, or Jason, excuse me, Jason saying so, uh, but we would have to vote or give direction to send a letter to help defray the cost of, of the elevator, Absolutely. which may help us otherwise, you know, we talked about using ARP funds towards it, mm -hmm. but you know, if we can get a grant from, from the state, or if they'd be willing to fund something like that, I certainly I support think it. we should ask. I know that Alderman asked if you had concerns about reducing the debt that we're having to pay, because that is a large when you think about we're going to be carrying. What do we determine? What was it, $6 million in debt, additional debt, Alderman Odom? Eight. It was eight. Yeah, eight, was it? Oh, you're talking about the two projects. The f uh, okay, the four, plus four. Because originally, what did we have? We originally 
proposed for the elevator. Was it two million dollars? Was the original? Two point one million was the original. And it ended up being four, almost four. So we may want to ask for two. Would this board be amenable to us sending a letter to um, Representative Tyson requesting that? Absolutely. Sure. 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 Okay. So, so <coughs> Kim, what? Kim, do you are you? Um, you may not have the information with you right now, but. What debt do we have coming off this year? Don't we have almost about three, four million dollars coming off of debt service this year? Um, no, I think we have just over two million dollars two million? coming off the next two years. Okay, the next two years. So right now it's approximately one million dollars that will that will come off the books um, by by June thirtieth of twenty twenty. June, June 30, 2023, then the following year, it will be another $1.1 million. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you have a million dollars that year to spend on additional debt service. It means you're paying off your debt service. Even if we've incurred new debt service that's not being factored into that as well. I want to be able to go ahead and make a motion, a lease, to include the Garden Street sidewalk, eighty-five thousand, the Pembroke sidewalk, four hundred fifty thousand, and the um, one one hundred and twenty thousand for the Broad Street and uh, Chelsea area, with the total six hundred fifty-five thousand dollars to be allocated to those three different projects. That's my motion. Well, I would like to add to that because, you know, we had discussed um, there was some drainage deficiencies um, that was going to require, um, I think it was $500,000 to <coughs> place some culverts. Well, I just want to get this first one out of the way. So, can we it's, just... It's, are those culverts, is any of that under our FEMA <coughs> money that we're going to get for ditch work? To my knowledge, it wasn't. It wasn't, okay. It wasn't, it's and that's why it was included. Okay. It, that's why it was included um, in the um, ARP funding when um, it was discussed with us. Um, I don't know, um, knowledge something's changed. Avery or Al is... crazy that we got that money and we, we barely can spend it on the dishes. Well, yes, no. uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the board and um, all of the best. I have this handout that we prepared that had the two million. If I... Yeah, I just want to ask you. Is it's there... included in the two million that you Right, yes, but as all of my, I don't know if all of them are being able to mention it or Paris, is that where that can be included within the FEMA funding that we receive? No, those are okay. not eligible I didn't for think FEMA. So. Yes, okay, they were declared okay. ineligible. Okay. So um, they're also shovel ready. I mean, they are they are ready uh, ready to go. They are the candidate projects that we are saying are our top priority. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Well, me personally, I would like to have um, <coughs> monies to go ahead for the storm water pumps um, systems. Um, to go head on so we can have some monies available there to get that started for um, in Ward 5. Um, and then later on. I have another question. Mm -hmm. So we appropriate, we agreed to $2 million mm -hmm. for drainage. Right. So doesn't that include, mm -hmm. is that the, what you're talking about, the 500000 for the East Road? Right. East Rose, that was all included in that. Right, I was million. asking him because you said, was would that be included in FEMA? Correct, but, but not that, but isn't it in the two million we've already set aside out of the six Yeah, that million? is. Oh, okay. But so you, you was asking, would it be included in the FEMA funding? Correct. That's why I wanted to make so sure that it wasn't. For, what I'm confused at is no, there's an addition, additional 500. No, no. It's, we're going to already, we've already voted to take care of all that. Yeah, okay. exactly. I just wanted, I was confused. <laughs> so, when well, you said FEMA funding, that's why I wanted to correct. make sure. Correct, correct. <laughs> so to reiterate my motion, do you want me to include the 85? Yeah, while you're doing it, why don't you include about $10 million to redo the bridge on uh, County Line Road uh, so when it rains it doesn't flood and trap those people in. Why don't you include about $10 million or so 
to replace the bridge on uh, old airport road so it doesn't flood the people when it rains good and hard and I mean we can we can keep right on going. I mean I've got issues over in Ward Three with flooding. So I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, listen, go ahead and in your motion include about ten million dollars to replace a couple of bridges to get them well, up high enough people four, can get out when to floods. Go to, but do you have sidewalks in your community? You do. So I'm yeah, happy but with the right city now. didn't buy them. I mean but it doesn't developer matter. Put them in. We do this all the time, and I don't understand why a community has to suffer. It's four hundred fifty thousand. I don't have sidewalks <laughs> on my streets. But well, you have. If I drive through Tabernacle, is you have a sidewalk, sidewalk that goes around but, the circle, but, but it's a mile a and a half from my streets. But this is a little piece of over where the community center is. You're, it's probably, you're you, probably closer to a sidewalk, and I'm not disputing the fact but that, that you is how sidewalks. It, that's how it's being projected. Is that oh I need this I need this well because I don't have that no they they don't they don't even come here and ask they're tired of asking put, just, they just want just put my silence. request in your motion as well then but we can only do from four point three million I'm I'm doing it out of a logical amount of money four hundred fifty thousand dollars to be allocated okay. and we can also put in some money to pay County Line Road as well. I support racetrack road. I'm just trying to get. I'm just trying to get the the sidewalks that I've been asking for for the last three budgets. Please, um, anybody that's watching, we do still have an election that's going to come off. Remember the people that you vote for in these seats. It's four hundred and fifty thousand oh, okay. dollars. It is. It is. That's how. I mean, it's that serious. It's four hundred fifty thousand dollars we spend up here, and y'all can't say yes to four hundred fifty thousand dollars. How much, well, how much, I got a question. Uh, how much was the bike and pedestrian plan that we just had? Any yeah, idea? Their total recommendation? No, no. How much was, did it cost us for that plan? I wanted to say, I think 50, 50 000, I seems that is about right. I, I don't, I'm not disputing that certain neighborhoods need sidewalks. I just don't know what, what was the purpose of us just having a plan made. Because we're that was the it. area that was going to be conducive to the community and less expensive. But, but how do you know that there's not dollars. another community that needs it worse than that one? I'm not disputing that, but I'm sitting here in this seat, and can you, can you, you've been on the board for how many years? Can you tell me how much infrastructure has been built up over in Pembroke? No, and but that's I, not a negative no, to you. No, I'm no, just, but I, what I would say is I don't think we want to get into this conversation about looking at what each ward has gotten. Because if we went back and took a look at what each ward has gotten, and then we decide how, that's how we're going to spend the future money, um, I can tell you, Ward Six and Ward Three hadn't gotten anything. That's right. And you guys advocate at all the time in public that, oh well, these wards we really don't need it much. And I understand that. I've never I, said that. I've, well, if I ain't heard it from you, I definitely heard it from, from never Odin. Said it. But that's not a negative. That's not negative. That means that you're able to put more support into so, other So let wards. me let me make a suggestion. Why don't we take the, how much has been allocated so far? This is just a suggestion. 2.2. So 2.35 2. 2. million. Take 2.35 million, figure out how much that's been spent by ward, and then go back to your proposal about spending the rest of it equally by hey ward. Hey man, I'll, I'll accept that motion. What the heck is to say that to me? Huh? So, so, in, so instead of looking at the balance of what hasn't been spent and dividing that equally amongst the ward, to take that into consideration, figure out how much each ward got, and then divide that by six or seven, depending on if the mayor wants to spend some or not, and then figure out what, what amount is there. And whatever amount that is, I'm going to defer to the alderman elect that's going to be sitting in this seat in a couple months. And I would go along with that. Make that a motion. Well. First of all, there's already a motion on the floor. Oh, with no second. With, with no we second. No with no second. And then um, you're saying so, the money that's already allocated. So the money that's already allocated has been to, are you working on that? This is a pause Ms. Ms. Ostrom is working on it, yes. Okay. Board 
is that is that second? Four two. Four two. That's three hundred. Yes. And the Lord for its grace cracked growth over a great tent of many thousands. Word five is no normal seven over a place tent four hundred thousand. I thought that was Derby Park. Bloomfield Street, is that now in Ward 5, Barbara? I don't know I if thought, that's um, Bloomfield. He included that in what was already the 200, I mean, 2 million, 350, 50, okay. yeah, 300. But is that Ward 5 now, Bloomfield? Yes. Okay. So... So Ward 2 has $600,000, and I still need $450,000. So what so are we that, talking about? So can you re retract? Well, there was no second, so <clears throat> can you? I mean, I, could, I mean, it died if there's not a second, but at the end of the day, $450,000 for sidewalks is what I'm asking for. Um, well, <laughs> I, I would like to see that we subtract monies that's already been spent that went to each ward and the difference be split six ways if the mayor don't have a problem with Second. that. <laughs> the remaining balance be given to each ward. Second. So you're saying the 4.3 be divided into the seven wards? Yep. Six. Six wards. Six ward. yep. oh, okay, so then I'm still going to get the $627,000. Yeah. Thank Coming you. Out and if you don't want that, if you feel that no, another ward did that if all you, from the beginning. Thank you. If you if you feel that another ward may need that, then we yes, you give it. I, give it I, to another If ward. that's what we're gonna do, if anybody needs anything, I will yield my money to you. Thank you. I second, third, whatever. So 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 just to be clear, you're saying take the money that's already been allocated, the two point three million dollars. Three five. You're gonna take. Let's figure out what she just said, take those dollar amounts, subtract that from each ward, and then whatever the difference is with the overall amount, that's what we're going to give each ward to spend. Correct. Okay. And you second it, wait a second. Yep. Wait, hold on. Yeah, 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 because yeah. y'all get tricky now. No. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, we got six point, we, we received six point seven, so six, seven, seven, we, six million five. seven hundred and four thousand three hundred fifty one dollars. We've already spent two million three hundred and fifty. But the way that off. he's, but the way that you're explaining it is, is we subtract. I got, that. I thought you were saying that's fine. I'm okay. still coming out on top. All right. All right. So we subtract what's already been spent. Allocated is exactly I love subtract it. what's allocated. Correct. So, um, Ms. Kim, that does Thank mean you, Mayor. that does mean I get six hundred and something thousand dollars. Keep what's what's my calculation for I for I vote on this? Yeah. A lot more than there, eighty five, whatever it was for the sidewalks, four hundred fifty. Is everybody in agreement on the items that she itemized? <coughs> Is everybody in agreement on those items? I think yeah, but because that was two million dollars. Yeah, exactly. Because I don't want two things taken off or four mm -hmm. things added a day from now that somebody <laughs> inadvertently left off. So. Well, see, that don't equal out for me. And <laughs> I assume again, without going through each of those items, <laughs> that those items were expended <laughs> through general fund expenditures. <laughs> Yep. Or grants, or. So I do want to bring to your attention, though, that the um, all of those add up to two point one million. Mm -hmm. And when you allocated it um, back in March, I believe it was March eighth, it was approved. Mm -hmm. You allocated two million. Mm -hmm. So that one hundred thousand dollars was just going to be. Well, 
let me uh, let me correct. So so Al did come up with some updates, and that was a full two million on those projects broken down. Okay. Not two point one million. He he had since made some updates on that. Okay. I think you have that. He okay. sent it to you today. I just want to understand or misunderstand you about your motion in the second for board votes. So. Mathematically, we're going back. We have four, three, five, zero, three, five, one, four point three million dollars divided by seven gives us six. 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 So you're not getting that? Okay. No, you're you're wrong already, sir. She's wrong already. <coughs> okay. That's what's what's here we go. That's so confusing. The six point seven million dollars. That's what we got, correct? Correct. Six point seven divided by six is what? A million. A million one sixteen. That is each ward's allotment. Now you have to take the $2 million that's already been allocated and take out by ward what's already been allocated from each of that $1.1 million per ward and then whatever the balance is left over is what you have to spend. Don't okay. you can have to I need to get to the <laughs> Yeah, is it 350000 in there? Yeah. Okay, yes. so who, who, okay. who is responsible for that? The well, whole this, board? This is what I would suggest. I would suggest give that staff direction, let them crunch all these numbers, mm -hmm. put it on a piece of paper in our next agenda and let us approve it. Well, Thank you, Jeff, for meeting across the line. I appreciate some that. Some of those things were holistically the whole city, I would think, like a redevelopment. I not appreciate necessarily you. Well, Terry, we're, we're doing some real city business up here, you guys. I'm just so proud of everybody. Thank you. I, I agree so, with, with so, Mr. Jeff. Davis, what that motion, do we need to retract that motion and just give direction back to Let's let's do that, and then you can vote on a written motion. I retract my second. But you, but the board is in agreement on the, the direction. Absolutely. Yes. I retract my motion. Um, I just want to um, and, and for clarity, again, <laughs> some of those items could be site specific to a ward, and some of those items could be city -wide. the whole the whole city. Mm -hmm. Are we in agreement on that? Yes. No. No? no not okay, either. so the redevelopment commission is how much? Three fifty. And that's gonna be expended to that ward? Correct. No, 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 no. Uh, but that no. would be so that would be ward one. Three because the three wards represent yeah, the redevelopment there you go. commission. Sure. Thank you. you. Do that? That's fine. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> the three wards, one, oh, okay. two, and five represent or or make up the redevelopment commission. So if yeah. you want to do it, sure. divide it that way. Thank you. That's correct. I have that great plans for my money. Thank you. Hopefully I got my fifty fifty thousand I need. <laughs> Anything else on item on item number uh, twenty five? Anything else on that item? So, Thank you, Mayor. You might want to plan A, B, and C on that one. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go to appointments. Uh, Alderman Odom. Uh, none tonight, sir. Alderman Bess. None. Alderman Kinsey. None. Alderman Ashton. None, sir. Alderman Harris. None. Alderman Bingham. None tonight, sir. Attorney's report. Nothing important tonight, Mayor. City Manager's report. A few things to report. First of all, our July 26 board meeting. Uh, in the event of a runoff, July 26 is set as election day. So, is there a desire from the board to cancel or reschedule this meeting? Uh, Can we reschedule either the night before, or the night after, or does anybody want to cancel it? I would cancel. It. Do you want to cancel it? Yeah, because uh, <laughs> the night before, the night after, I don't think. Um, do we I need a motion on that, Mr. Davis? July 26th meeting. Um, <laughs> did you, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Second for that? I second. Uh, motion second. Anybody, everybody got that? And any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Motion carries. What else have you got tonight? I want to give you an update on the Tisdale House. Uh, the city attorney and I have been discussing this for for several weeks on, on the proper process we need to go through on this. And originally, uh, the motion was made to put a banner up saying free house. And so Scott and I have been talking. We cannot legally give the house away to just anyone. Uh, we can open this up to the highest bidder, which we have already done, and, and no one took advantage of that. However, we can give the house to a nonprofit who has experience and specializes in historic preservation. So we've spoken with the Preservation Foundation, and they're interested in the project. Uh, 
If we do this, interested parties would contact the city clerk for additional information. Those parties would, would then provide a proposal to the Preservation Foundation who would vet uh, that proposal. And that would inc include information on how they're going to move that house, what the estimated cost would be to move that house. Uh, they'd have to meet a certain time frame to move the house. They'd have to have other property secured on where that house would go, a plan on how they would basically rehab that house. And then there would have to be some type of bonding requirements in there to where we can make sure that uh, the interested parties would be able to actually pull the project off. We're also looking at an alternate plan to where if no one does, does come up, Preservation Foundation is interested in relocating that house uh, as well. And so we just wanted to give you an update on, on where we are on that. Uh, we do plan on putting uh, the sign up to start this process. The goal would be to have a sign up and give folks 30 days um, to, to reach out, do a proposal, let the Preservation Foundation vet that and go from there. Any questions on that? Any idea when the architect's going to be ready to send to go out for bids? I, I think the bidding process will probably be later in the summer. They're they're getting close on all of their um, designs. When they get when they get that squared away, it's got to go to FEMA for approval. So we don't know how long it's going to take for FEMA to look at that information. I would just say I hope something happens because I just feel like a lot of resources, time, brain, energy has gone to this this home. I know that it is historic and there's a lot that mm -hmm. it is, but I mean, at this point, you know, we probably, you know, if that doesn't work out as the next decision, we're going to have to tear it down. I mean, because we have to, you know, Stanley White's going to be coming. Or, That's know. right. And so we, we, we still have a time frame for where that house has to be removed. And we're, we're well within that because okay. even the the footprint with the Stanley White Recreation Center is not going to hit that house. That's actually going to be parking. So, so we do have time to be able to work this out. So, so I have a question. Yes, sir. I know I'm getting older, but <laughs> I, I thought that we had a pretty robust discussion about this and that there was a sign that was going to go in front of it, free to whoever wants it. Here's the phone number. Are we waiting to get all this governmental red tape together before we can put a sign up there that says that? So where's the sign at? Sign will probably be up by Thursday of this week. So we're at least a month since we had this discussion. So I don't, <coughs> I don't understand why the sign's not up, but maybe that's just me. Uh, Mr. Hughes, could you update us? Uh, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to update us, but could you talk a moment about some of these existing neighborhood signs that are starting to fail and they have deferred maintenance. There's one in particular that I took a photo of and I would assume within a reasonable 30 day period it might have been back up and uh, I think either this board or future board needs to sign on, on what a great policy that we're going to have on. It would be a great spot for that board member to see some ARP money. Yes. Updating some signs. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. So oh, yeah. if you're referring to the Colonial Heights sign. No, I'm just in general, there's I'll, quite a few of them. I'll give you a great example of that sign. And several of the signs do need to be repainted. And so that is going to be a goal for, for staff to get out there this summer and start working on those. There's one sign, Colonial Heights. Uh, that sign was basically broken in half. Uh, I spoke with the Public Works Director today after I saw the picture of the sign. They are going to start repairs on that. And, and they're also going to relocate that back a little bit farther to where hopefully it won't be run into again so I think that sign will probably be back out in a few weeks okay. thank you but oh. those signs were those signs are basically the cities um, and we've got to maintain those um, uh, a lot of the neighborhoods have them uh, a few new ones have been put in so we're gonna have to keep those things up. well you're gonna have to get some policy because I know all the one with Harrison I spent discretionary to fix the one over in colonial way yeah. And so now you're saying there's city signs, so I assume the city's going to make that. So, so one thing we did do in this budget is we added some funding for sign repairs as well in the public works. So do I get reimbursed so I can spend my money again? <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, so let's be conservative. So um, Alderman Harrison, Alderman uh, Astor, don't y'all sit over there and tell me how I'm going to spend my ARP I, money. I'm not going to be No, I'm not. <laughs> Okay, it's already allocated for what I want to do with it. Could you update us on what's happening outside here? 
Yes, sir. The well, they would have probably poured concrete by now. However, the rain has, has, has slowed the contractors down. Since they started to work a few weeks ago, they have been working steadily on a variety of things. Um, and uh, next thing is they're getting ready to start pouring the footers. Then they're going to start uh, doing some of the preliminary block work uh, with the foundation. So you're going to start seeing, weather permitting, you're going to start seeing a lot of work coming out of the contractors very, very soon. I um, do want to give you a few other updates. The F-11 jet at Lawson Creek Park, uh, we do have a contractor. Uh, they will be starting work on that rehab on June 1st, so it will take weather permitting approximately three weeks for them to complete that project. We're excited about that. We've had some downtown concerns about trash downtown, so uh, we did use some MSD funds to purchase 16 additional trash cans. Those have been placed throughout the downtown area and we're already seeing some use in those areas and they've been strategically relocated. Thank you. <laughs> also, also starting this weekend, police are increasing downtown patrols. So on Fridays and Saturdays, police will have their segways down from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. to address any of the issues that the residents have had. Mm. Um, the next thing we've got, I want to congratulate our city clerk, Brenda Blanco, who was appointed to the North Carolina League of Municipalities Board of Directors during the recent City Vision Conference, so congratulations. Yay! And also want to congratulate Battalion Chief Dennis Tindall on receiving the Firefighter <coughs> of the Year Award that was presented by Civitan International that last week. And summertime is just about here, and I couldn't say, uh, go away without saying that the Footloose on the News Summer Concert Series returns this Friday night with the British Invaders, weather permitting, and hopefully it will be good weather. Uh, on Friday, June 10th, we'll have the I-42 band. On Friday, June 24th, the Trial by Fire, the Journey Tribute band. On Friday, July 15th, we'll have the Carolina Dreamers. On Friday, August 12th, On the Border, the Ultimate Eagles Tribute. On Friday, August 26th, Rev On, The Foreigner Experience. On Friday, September 2nd, The Tams. And we'll have a special date on Saturday, September 10th during the MS Bike Ride downtown. We'll have West End Mambo. So have a, we have a good concert series scheduled this year. I hope everyone comes out. I have a question. I don't see a group on the list. Are they, were they not available for the, any of those dates? We, we rotate them every okay. year. Okay, yeah. okay, gotcha. Um, Alderman Odom, um, can you mention, um, he was talking about people being honored. Can we have a policeman being honored tonight? Uh, yes, Master Police Officer Matthew Arnold was just honored across the street at Stanley Hall uh, for the annual Back the Blue event. He was just honored about, I think, 15 minutes ago. So we just <laughs> missed it. So. We have we did well, so it's <laughs> Anything Foster, else? Yes. yes. Could uh, you give an update on the cemetery, um, what's going on there with the um, damaged headstones? Yes, we've actually just gotten uh, two sets of bids from historic preservation uh, folks, and so we're vetting those right now. Uh, we're also working with uh, the questers on that. We're going to um, let the questers really coordinate that because that's what they traditionally do. So uh, work on repairs to those 17 or 18 headstones will be starting very soon. I'd be curious when you get the bid how much it was. I mean, I know both Alderman Astor and myself donated our funds, some of our funds to to them to repair those headstones, but I would like to know what the overall cost is going to be. We can give you an update. Yeah, can you email me that, those two? Sure can, yes. Anything else? No, sir. Let's go to new business. Um, the only thing I have tonight is I wanted to remind everybody that a few months ago um, the mayor was kind enough to do a proclamation for Johnny Sampson Day yes. to honor Commissioner Johnny Sampson, and that is going to take place this Saturday. So we designated the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend as the Johnny Sampson Day. Mm -hmm. So that is happening this Saturday at Union Point. His family will be out there at the gazebo, and um, I don't know two who John to, It's two to six. Two to six. Uh, let me double check. Yeah, um, two to six. Yeah, two, two to, to six. six. And so I know that. Um, Mother Sampson, which everybody calls her, um, would, would love for everybody to come out and just, you know, they, they want it as a day of celebration and remembrance, not a sad day, but a so I believe um, Memorial Day has been his birthday traditionally, and so we just wanted to set a date when talking to them, so Saturday of Memorial Day weekend kind of covers it. Mm -hmm. So everybody come out to do that, and then 
On Friday, if you really want to celebrate a birthday, uh, Caleb Bradham, um, the inventor of Pepsi-Cola, turns 155. So come by the Pepsi store wow. and get a nickel Pepsi all day long and a piece of birthday cake. So I hope you'll come by and celebrate it because we celebrate it every year. That's it. Hey, do you have time while John Sampson's? Um, two to six. And I do have <laughs> two, I two to six. Um, my one last thing is um, I do... I, I do want to apologize to to the residents downtown um, where this past Saturday night there was a lot, a lot, a lot of loud music coming from the um, event in the Bermuda tri Triangle. Um, three bands, very loud. I understand people, it could be heard all the way on Middle Street, down from West Street. 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 From Pollard Street. It was, there was three bands, it was that loud. Yeah. And so... Um, I, I just want the citizens to know that I hear you, I've heard you, um, and going forward next year we'll try to see if we can get them to have their event end at 8 o'clock and put the bands in the earlier part of the day or take the bands inside because it really was, we got lots and lots of complaints. So. I think that's always going to be tough for Ward 1 to, you know. <laughs> it's going to be tough have, for Ward have, 1. Yeah. There's, there's no way to find the happy medium. so. Maybe by restricting the hours we can, but we need to really think outside the box because no other part of town gets it like we get it downtown, so we've got to find some resolution. Yes, because we love the music. Okay. Anything else? Oh, no, sir. Thank you. All the here? Yes. Can I get an update on Stanley White? <laughs> Stanley White Recreation Center project, so our contractors are. And our architect and engineers are currently working on, on the updated plan. They're working on the wind zones because we are looking at uh, that's going to be an emergency shelter so they're 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 fast in the process on that perfect and we'll okay. also give you an update on henderson park if you like yes yep, so, all of that. so our change in scope of work was approved by fema so that that change in scope of work will include uh, taking out the old fitness course putting a brand new fitness course in uh, uh, putting in a 30 by 65 shelter that will double as a farmer's market uh, doing playground addition there will be some uh, asphalt games such as bingo, tic-tac, things like that on, uh, right beside the basketball court. We will light the basketball court to add some portable bleachers out there. Um, That's what I'm talking about. So several really good What about the bathrooms? Bathrooms or in design will be coming up soon as well. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Al, uh, if you don't have it, but I would like to get an email to the dollar amount that was that has been spent on the ditches from the FEMA money that we received. I would like that. Um, and then the other question, you probably might need to come to the mic, um, or maybe Avery, uh, 211 West Street or Water Street. Um, do we know when that ditch is gonna be worked on? Uh, Ms. Bryant's house, do we, you're very familiar with it. That will be can I confirm it? Yes. Just Can confirm. I just email you with a confirmation? Because I got to look at the, what they have in the works, the plan, so to figure out what we're going to do and when we're going to do it. So That's perfect. I will email you and let you know. Absolutely. I appreciate it so much. And Avery, excuse me. Yes, may I interject? I'll, I'll yield my time to you. Thank you. Um, also, you know, we discussed the Kenston Street as well because of the bank erosion. Yes, ma'am. Um, is that something I looked that into that, and that does not have a Cat D project allotted for it. Yes. So I will look into finding ways to fix it myself, or staff will fix it. We'll figure something out. Because it's a right, it's city right of way that runs right to, if you look at the, the flat, runs right to the canal. So we have some leeway to do something. We'll be in, a, on, in our own right of way if we do the repairs. Okay, because I'm talking about the. Well, you know, the, the bank is eroding off the edge of the road, uh, right, like right down to the edge. But yeah, that's right in the that's in the in the right of way. So we can do some bank stabilization right there or something. And that's right beside the city property piece. Yes, okay. So we'll all be right. doing taking care of that. All right. so. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Thank you. Harris. You're welcome. Um, and the last thing I want to say is um, shout out to the team, the whole city staff that was keep you two, mainly you, Foster, keeping us up to date with the debris, the trees, and the um, power outages. We appreciate, I personally appreciate every single person that clocks into the city of New Bern and clocks home at the end of the day. Do not think that the work that you do goes, goes unnoticed. 
not for me, and I know I can speak for the rest of the board. We appreciate you. You make me look good. So thank you, especially during those times we get filled in so many questions. Well, my electricity getting turned on? Who's getting the debris? And you always have the answer. So thank you to the staff. I appreciate you. You get the Charlie Bouchard answer. Two, two hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. Howard Manash. Um, yes. First thing I'd like to do is I'd like to thank everyone in Ward 3 for trusting me with another four years of representing uh, you. And thank you. And um, Foster, it's probably been over a year ago, but when we had that major downtown back up because there was a wreck on the bridge or there was some paving going on on the bridge, I don't even remember what the problem was, but I asked the um, prior chief of police at that time to come up with some type of a policy um, to put in place to dispatch officers to intersections to, to try to move some of this traffic because the little bridge was open the whole time. It was just that the traffic, some of the traffic lights had everything backed up and there was way more cars than what could, you know, the street could handle. And I, I don't, I haven't mentioned anything to our, our new chief about it, but um, we definitely, it's going to only get worse. When this project starts over here, and, and they start closing roads and paving and backups and stuff like that, downtown New Bern is going to be jam-packed. And it creates a problem, you know, for everybody when that happens. So we need to make sure that we have a good plan put together so when that traffic starts backing up, that we can, you know, get it moved through as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Okay, Alderman Kinsey. Not been, sir. <coughs> Alderman Bess. Yes, um, Alderman um, Bingle. Um, I also too got some calls about the the music on Pollock Street with within that um, celebration or whatever that was going on Saturday. Um, and I just let the citizens know that they should have called the police department because we do have a noise ordinance in the city. So I've received some calls as well. Um, and um, I just want to mention, um, I think all of us here that's been here in this city over 40 or 50 years know um, Dr. Sidney Bodenwell. His wife passed away. She was 91 years old. And um, Dr. Bodenwell is not doing very well himself. Um, he was in the hospital, but he's back home now. Um, so let's just keep him and his, um, his family in prayer. You know, Dr. Bonwell was very instrumental in um, the city and county prostrate uh, screening program for, for our citizens. Um, and then he was also a, um, the, he was the um, chief um, officer at the health department over the clinical side of, of the health department. So let's just keep him in prayer, please. Um, also, Foster, um, as you know, every year, you know, when it gets to be summertime, um, I, you know, I have to say about our employees, those that work outside in the heat, you know, just, just make sure that they are aware and know the policy and taking breaks and getting plenty of liquids so that we don't have any deaths due to strokes. So, um, and I just want to thank you, um, the city staff, this board, for being so amenable and agreeing with the ARP funding. I just don't know what to do. Thank you, Mayor, for not wanting to have it split seven ways. <laughs> but I just thank all of you for your support and all that we do for our citizens. We, you know, we have to work together to, for the betterment of our city. And that's it. Okay, Alderman Odom. Uh, just a quick announcement, Mayor. Saturday at 745 is gonna be the third annual Mayor Leander Morgan Golf Tournament at uh, Harbor Point Golf Club. That is sponsored by Kappa Alpha Psi. Um, I don't play golf, but I did sponsor it because they didn't want me out there playing golf. But, um, they've got a pretty good um, calendar of events for that day. So if anybody does play golf, um, the proceeds are going toward the Stanley White Recreation Center project. Awesome. awesome. 7.45 in the morning. I'm happy to catch you on Yeah, we don't play golf at night. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Any other new business? That's all, Mayor. I, I would just like to point out that yes. I just received an email. Many of you probably received it as well. The death toll now is up to 21 in that shooting oh. in Texas. Mm. Oh, Majority of them were mm. school, children, school, children. School children, yeah. Mm. School children. Thank you. Do you have anything else in the new business? Or okay. No. I know we do have that eat that uh, this item right here. Yeah, we we canceled I, the meeting, but um, I don't know. Do you want to that that we received tonight about the elections that uh, we won't be able to seat because of the runoff till after August twenty second? We had said the first well, we said the first meeting after the election was certified, which would be August twenty second. Now the other issue is that we have had a uh, an alderman elected for the sixth ward. So we can seat him, which would mean we would we would displace our sitting alderman. So I would no. I would make no. a motion that the board stays intact until oh, okay. after um, the July twenty sixth. I mean, at, you know, after that runoff and the election is certified. So I I, I agree. Well, do we need a motion for that, uh, Scott? Let, let me let me look into that and we'll deal with it next meeting. Okay, I definitely agree with, with that. We came in as a board, and I want us to be able to sign and dine as a board, regardless of who's sitting on it. I don't want it to be individuals. Let's just finish out our term and let the next board do their term. So Bobby can rest a little more. <laughs> and we should recognize um, Alderman-elect Bob Brinson in the office. And congratulations. <laughs> but keep coming to the meetings. They might have questions for you, though. <laughs> Glad to, see, do we glad need to a, see him here. Yes. Do we need a closed session tonight? Uh, yes, my members of the board, uh, need you a closed session to uh, maintain our attorney client privilege pursuant to 143 1311A3 to discuss City of Newman versus uh, Gazimine, uh, Al Marisi, and Ahmed. So moved. <coughs> so, Mr. Alderman do we have anything else for closed session? Uh, uh, Mr. Davis? Not tonight, Mayor, probably okay. next meeting. Okay. okay. Uh, motion second. Uh, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed say. We're going to go into closed session.